Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Monarch Q4 show. I must say I have one of the best jobs in the world. Who can say that they can be sitting here on the dock of the bay where the Sedewitt knows Junior Sailing Regatta, three exciting days of competition to go in the Opti Sunfish Laser, and also introduced for the first time this year, the E-Class. Welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining us for this broadcast. I'm joined by Christina Palacios. She's the co-chair of the Regatta Death at the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources. Welcome to the broadcast. It's better than being in the office this morning. The breeze out here is nice. The sun is up. It sure I'm is. for some good <laughs> sailing this morning. Yes, sure is better out here. Uh, Christy, you, you were behind, one of the folks behind, putting this regatta together. How was it? Um, it was a bit challenging. We, we had a very narrow window to pull this off. But, you know, we had a great team, um, a great committee. Um, Laurie Lowe, Dallas, and all those persons from the National Sailing Association, you know, they, they came forth and they came, they stepped up to the plate and we were able to pull it off. Normally this regatta, you try to get it from island to island, it has been held in Exuma and Harbor Island in the last couple of years. Yes. Why the idea to bring it to the Providence this year? You know, with sailing being introduced as a national sport, um, it, it, it's important that we, we introduce more regattas to New Providence. We did that with the best of the best. And the same here with the um, to do it, um, Junior Sailing um, Championship. But I can tell you next day it will be back to another family island. It must have been hectic to get all those kids in from those islands. How many kids do we have competing in this year's regatta and where all do they come from? Okay, we have close to 200 kids um, participating in this year's regatta. Um, we have students um, from the Grand Bahama Sailing Academy, we have um, the Lutra Sailing Academy, Harbor Island Sailing Academy, um, Exuma Sailing Club, Long the Mark Knowles um, Junior Sailing Club, which is out of Long Island. Um, so, and then we have persons here in New Providence, um, the Royal NASA Sailing Club, the Life Key School Sailing um, Club, and also from the NASA Sailing Academy. Once again, we have the Sunfish, we have the Laser, we have the Opti. And for the first time, we are introducing E-Class. Yes, yes. You know, it's important, like I said, with sailing being introduced as a national sport, that we combined um, all aspects of sailing that is done here in the Bahamas. And of course, you know, sloop sailing is, is, is a part of our culture. And, and we want to introduce that. To, uh, we want to merge all two. To, to ensure that um, sailing in all aspects are, are, is um, um, shown and, and, and is, is important and is on and an equal plane here in the, bah in the Bahamas. And we, like we see at the best of the best, everybody comes on down here to Montague to enjoy the fun and festivities, not only on the water, but also on the shore. And we're following that same format. The opening ceremony is set for later on this evening at about 6 o'clock. And then we have some open-air concerts. These kids are really going to enjoy themselves then, this weekend. Charles, we, we're focusing on them. Even in the entertainment, we're focusing on the youth. We have the um, um, the winners of the Junior John Canoe, wow. who's going to be here to perform each night. And then we have um, school pop bands, you know. And so we're, we're really focusing on the youth. So we admonish you to come on down, bring your kids. It's midterm, you know, this is a, a kid-friendly environment. We have security, we have a playground that the younger kids can go and enjoy themselves. So come on down. And like we see at the best of best, how important was it to show these youngsters that, hey, that we don't only want to show the big boys uh, and have to have good time, but to show the kids as well, who are the future. And that, that is important to us, Fisher, because like you said, they are the future. And, um, you know, over the past couple of months, you would have seen where we would have um, partnered with the Ministry of Education in, in introducing sailing into the schools, in the curriculum, with 11 schools um, having... Um, introduce sailing clubs. Wow. So it's important that we, we get the young persons involved and give them the same level of respect, the same level of opportunity to compete with each other here. In the, and it's not just in New Providence, it's uh, you know, nationwide. We, we have to show them that. Uh, we have four divisions. How will they be sitting in the format? That's a lot of race to get in for Saturday. There is a lot, a lot of races going on and um, we have members from the race committee who will come on after me who will explain exactly how the races are going to be done. But it was a bit challenging, but they were able to coordinate it in order to have everyone race all the races in, and um, all of the children will be basically competing, giving them an opportunity to compete against each other. I know that you have a busy day 
you'll be <laughs> glad when this is over on Saturday. You guys have done a great job out here at Montague. is set up just like the best of the best. And everybody, please come out, support these youngsters. Some of these youngsters even sail with the big boys, so we'll see some of the, the big boys coming out here to lend their support as well. Yes, yes, all of the owners of the E-Class, you know, they, they're here to support um, the persons that are sailing on their vessels. And, you know, even with, with Dallas and Exuma, you, you would have seen in Farmer's Key where his boat placed third in the C-Class. So these kids are really, um, um, they have their eye on competing with the big boys. They, they're coming for them. You know, so they're, they're really looking forward to competing against them. And, with speak, them. and speaking about the E-Class, a special donation from the British High Commissioner before we get to that piece. Yes, that, that, was, that was really, you know, it, it shows that um, there is interest in sailing and, and the fact that it is a sloop, you know, it shows that there's, there's something special about our sloop, sloop sailing here in the Bahamas um, to see that uh, the British High Commission is, is um, donating an E-Class boat to, to us uh, to encourage um, young persons to get involved in sailing and not just competitive sailing but also sloop sailing. So we're going to go now. We spoke with Commissioner Hartley this morning on that big donation, an E-Class boat built by one of the best boat builders in the country, Mark Knowles. Well, we've been really excited about the Bahamas having sailing as a national sport. Sailing is huge in the UK. It's, uh, we're a fellow sailing nation. In fact, we have the most successful Olympic sailing team of all, of all time. And last year, I went to Exuma and I brought the heads of British sailing over and we had the most incredible time. And it just showed us the huge potential, the huge fun of sailing in the Bahamas. Last year, then we donated scholarships to help 40 young people from government schools to learn to sail. And this year, we're going to gift a boat. And the idea is to help young people, give them the resources they need to come and learn to sail. It's going to help the international sailors the, the, from the Optis and the Lasers and the Ilkas, give them a chance to practice in a sloop. And it's going to allow more kids from the government schools and from across the island to come out and to come and practice in an E-class. And Mark's been building this for us, Mark Knowles. And he says it's going to be the fastest boat in the regatta. Every boat Mark builds, he says it's going to be the fastest. <laughs> well, he's normally right, so we're very proud to be working with him. It's, um, uh, there's some fantastic boat builders in the Bahamas. There's only a f eight or ten left. And, uh, and as obviously part of this is, is protecting and investing in those who have these skills to build boats so, so that they can then train young people and there'll be a whole other generation of apprentices coming through. And we're hoping to, to help support that over the next couple of years, to help young people learn to build boats. And they'll come up with new ideas and new designs, but we reckon still this will be the fastest boat, even with all those new boats in the next few years as well. You know the big guys are going to be jealous on those A, B and C class. They're going to ask if you're doing it for this, where are their boats? <laughs> <laughs> I need to save up some pennies first, because those boats take a huge amount of investment, and I'm very proud to be here from Mark. Yeah, how much time, how much resources, how much money it takes to build those boats. Those, those boat owners and boat builders have really invested in something beautiful. Yeah, we've started off in an E-class. Maybe one day there'll be a B-class come from the High Commission. Let's see. But right now, what's important about the E-class is it gives young people a boat that they can handle, a boat that they can learn in, and a boat that they can master sloop sailing in. And then one day they can pro progress up to the bigger boats and, and, and race with the adults too. How's the reception been from the kids watching this being built and what's in store for them? Oh, it's just great fun. As in, not just the kids, me as well. As in, anyone who likes Lego or Technics or Meccano or, or just grabbing a piece of wood and whittling it down, you know, has loved watching Mark. And the creativity, and this, this guy just does everything by eye. You see him and he's got a piece of wood and he's, he's lining it up and then he carves it down and puts, places it perfectly every time. It's really seeing a master at work. It, it is incredible. You, you went down to Exuma last year and, I, and you said the, the guys were really impressed. How impressed were you with the government to name sailing as our national sport? Well, it's the first country in the world to have sailing as a national sport. That shows huge leadership. It did, did take away cricket as a national sport. A bit sad about that, but actually as a fellow sailing nation, we can 100% see that this is the perfect place to learn to sail. Montague Bay. Montague Bay should be protected as a world heritage site. It is the perfect place to learn to sail. When British sailing came over, they were very much looked at this and they said, well, you know, there's six months a year in the UK where there's no light, no heat, no, no wind, and uh, they, you know, all their young sailors, they, they should be bringing them here to, to, to be practicing. And uh, I think you know, it's, it's a huge privilege to be part of that as the 
British High Commission, huge privilege to be supporting it. But I think the government had a great vision and I think there's the new National Sailing Academy has got great potential, you know, new classes of boats racing here. Um, helping young people see an Olympic pathway to see one day could they be the next Sir Derwood Knowles. I think all of those things are really important. You know, new um, curriculum in the schools as well. And, you know, it's coming together. It's going to take years, not months, um, but the right people are involved and the UK will do whatever small bit we can to support that. Just want to say this sounds like a great partnership moving forward. Yeah, it, it is. And, and actually, the UK has 15,000 sailing clubs. It's a huge thing in the UK. And we have everything from kite surfing and, 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 and lasers like this to also traditional wooden boats racing as well. So we have the whole spectrum, just like the Bahamas. And actually, we can share with the Bahamas all the mistakes we've made, as much as all the great successes. We have an amazing elite training program, but we've also tried 15 different ways to do it wrong before we got there. And actually, that partnership will hopefully give the Bahamas a head start. And what the British Sailing has said is that any club in the Bahamas that would like to be twinned with a British club, we will 100% organise that, and that will allow an exchange of sailors, an exchange of boats, an exchange of resources. And so I know the Bahamas Sailing Association and the, the National Family Regatta and others are all thinking about these ways. How can we twin these clubs together? You know, some of the clubs here are saying, well, they're not, they're, they don't need to learn. They need to teach the UK how to do it. And that's true. There's some brilliant sailors here. Uh, in Alufa Sailing Academy, they've got some, some great sailors coming through. And they, there's, the UK can learn a huge amount from that as well. So I think it would be a cross-pollination in both directions. Generous donation there by the British High Commissioner Hartley and his crew. That E-Class sloop will be launched later on this evening during the official opening ceremony. Well, sailing is the national sport, and many years ago, this gentleman, who this regatta is named after, put the Bahamas on the map in terms of sailing, and we are pleased to be joined by his daughter, Charlotte Albury, this morning here at the Montague Foreshore. Thank you for well, for coming with us here today. You're quite welcome. It's my pleasure. Well, how do you, first of all, just now we saw that the Commissioner and the British High Commissioner donating an E-Class boat. How do you feel about that? That's fantastic. It's so great to see that, that they want to get the young, <coughs> young people involved, and no better way to do it than in the E-Class. So Doward knows a name. Nobody says nothing about sailing here in the Bahamas unless mentioning the name Sir Doward knows. And the regard is now being named in his honor. How do you feel about that? Uh, we're just overwhelmed with, um, with gratitude. And I know Dad is smiling down now, thinking, thank heavens that they're keeping my memory alive. And this could not have happened at a better time on the 24th on... Saturday will be six years since he left us, so this could not have come at a better time. But how important is you, as his daughter and his family, continue to his tradition? Um, we try as much as we can to keep his name out there, to keep it alive, not just with sailing, but all that he did for the community and for the Bahamas. And it just, like I say, warms our heart to know that the, the Bahamian people still think of him as um, putting sailing on the map with many other other people that have participated in sailing over the years. But we know that, that this was um, a great deal for Daddy, and especially the, the, the sloops that, um, that he was one of the ones who was instrumental in starting the regattas many, many years ago. And speaking about Sidoros, I got a chance to meet him. He was so generous. You can go to him and you can ask him. And he was so in tune with the sailors. Yes. His biggest thing was, all right, he loved to win, but who the friends that you made and the relationships that you you had during sailing, he said it was, it was unbelievable. That was the important part that he wants sailors to take away because they will be your friends for life. And now these youngsters may not... No, they just hear <laughs> off the name. They read about Sadurwit. They want to know who is Sadurwit after the, the regard is being named after him. So his tradition will live on forever. Is there any other things you guys want to want to say about Sadurwit? Um, I think this says it all. He, he again. He he loved to see the youth getting involved and to be able to bring in the inner city children. That was that was a dream for him. That um, you know he loved one Bahamas and he felt that we were. We all were one. I mean, no matter what your race, your creed, your color, that we should all be Bahamians and be proud to be Bahamians. So this, 
would be fantastic for him, for a legacy, knowing that this will continue in his name. We're here at the Sadirwood Nose Junior Sailing Nationals here at the Monarchy Foreshore, joined by his daughter, Charlotte Albury. And Sh Charlotte, I must say, the the atmosphere out here is just like the, you, you get a chance to see the big sailors are the best of the best. How do you feel about this atmosphere that they have set up? This is oh, it's, one of the it's best. unbelievable. When I drove by the other day and saw the flags out and and all the banners, it it like I say, I know Dad is looking down and thinking, "You're doing a good job, guys." Let me put a trick question to you. Can you sail? No. <laughs> How come you not even never ran into sailing? He was too um, interested in himself <laughs> and making sure oh, that no, he no, won. People, no, I'm not going to let you like no. People who know Sato and know that he was a generous guy. No, he, was not, no. he was into everybody. Interested in himself sailing. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't have time to teach us, so uh, which was fine. So that was, um, you know, we went out and cheered him on. And he would say to me, Charlotte, you can't yell, say, go, Daddy, go, because we can't go any faster than what we're trying. So in running, maybe, in swimming, but in sailing, if you're out there with the wind and you just got to hope for the best. Now, this is normally being held in the family island, but it's here in New Providence for the first time. Hopefully, New Providence first people can come out and support this. But do you like the, the idea of it going from island to island so that everybody can get a taste? I think so. I think that that's great. And I hope that our family can participate when, when we know where it's going to be. Um, Daddy used to always go down to Exuma to, for the regatta down there, and I know he enjoyed that immensely. So we, you know, the tradition continues, and we, as long as we're here, we'll be a part of, of his legacy. Before we let you go, we had a chance to interview some of the young sailors that will be sailing later on this morning here in Montague, and this is what they had to say on their chances heading into this weekend. My name is Christian Rose. I've been sailing for half of a year. I've been sailing for three years now. I've been sailing for three years. I've been sailing for seven and a half years. And I've been sailing for nine years. Sailing is fun. It's very competitive. There's nothing that I don't um, like about sailing. It's just everything in general that I like. I love sailing on the whole. You will get to meet a lot of people. You travel around the world. You get uh, social skills, life skills. Um, and me personally, I like how fast the boat goes. I really just enjoy the feeling of winning, being out on the water, uh, being free in the boat, and just sailing overall. Something I really, really enjoy. I just like being on the water, and I love sailing with my pairs, and yeah. It's just fun having a race with other people. And there's a lot of things that you need to know to get better than other people and beat them and come first place. It's really just the competition and the thrill of it all. Going all around the world and meeting new people. I like sailing in the FBL and making new friends. My great-great-grandfather was, um, when I was not born, he was the only one who was sailing in the family. And my mom wanted me to um, do, do continue the tradition of, of sailing. Whoever has the better strategy and better boat speed really wins the race and maybe win the regatta. I'd say I'm one of the fastest guys. Uh, in sailing, experience plays a lot of, it plays a little, uh, big role. So I, I think the amount of experience that I have, it, it, it helps a lot. Once I get on the water, it's just, I don't feel anything no more. I just sail, have fun, yeah. My strengths are definitely speed and mechanics. They really help me to get far and win a couple races. Joel. Joel. Joel, I can beat him. <laughs> Probably Abel. Eliza. Eliza Derrick. Craig Ferguson. Joshua Reese and Elian Higgs. I would go with Silas. He's one of my biggest competition, even though we sail exactly the same. Um, Kaden and Zachary. Who I have to look out for is definitely Craig Ferguson, Joshua Leash, Eliane Higgs, and Katie Kelly. Craig Ferguson, Norman Cartwright, Eliane Higgs, Katie Kelly, just a few names.
hopefully to do and know what I do way much better than the last regardless. I'm looking forward to like focusing and doing well in the regatta. Um, the play side, don't get lost, and that's basically it. I'm sailing with my peers and then probably other people from family islands and when I see a lot of boats, I tend to get nervous, but when I get on the water and on the side line, I just just shakes off me. This will be like a training camp for one of the regattas that I want to attend this summer, uh, the Ilka Four Worlds. So I just want to see how I feel, my boat speed, my knowledge, and how well it translates to my results. Um, I'm going to try my best. This is my first one. So yeah, I'm going to try my best. Very interesting interviews just now with those young kids. So one thing that I heard there, one of the youngsters said, it makes them feel relaxed being out there on the water. Yeah. Till they start the race. <laughs> I mean, anyone being out in the water, just sitting here now and the, and the breeze coming in, I mean, you can feel the stress leave you. So I wish them all the best and, um, and just to enjoy yourself, that's the main thing. Go out there and have a good time. Also what one of those youngsters said, it, 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 it allows him to travel and see places he would normally have seen. That's right. And, and, and that was the, the aim behind this. Yeah. Very much so that um, the, the, the different people that you meet, that you form relationships for the rest of your life. Because once you have sailing in your blood, then the rest is, is just magical. And, and my mommy always told me, you hear interesting things when you're not listening. And off here, you were telling me something interesting. For Sadowitz's 100th birthday, they had a regatta out yeah, here. Yeah, they did. He, he um, celebrated his birthday to the fullest. He had a walkathon, a regatta, a church service. It went on and on. He really enjoyed life, and he was just so happy to be around the people to, to share it with him. Well, I'm not giving anybody any ideas, but 100 seems to be the lucky number today. <laughs> because your mother is getting ready to celebrate that's 100th right. birthday. She's so be, what's right? That's right, in September. Wow. Yep. So, um, yeah, she says that she's, you know, she's right there and, mm -hmm. and she's healthy and, and, and strong. So either they're living on our time or we're going to be here for a long time. But it's a do with name will live on forever in this country, wherever there is sailing. I must say, your, your father did proud. You, had some, you have some big shoes to fill. I de definitely, I do, yes. And, um, but he, he was a great teacher, so I hope that we can make him proud of continuing his legacy. Well, thank you so much for coming out here and joining no, us. And on this I'd love to thank you, and I'd like to thank the Bahamian government for being so gracious as to, to name this regatta after Daddy. I know he, he would be, like I say... He's, just, out, he's out here in spirit. He's out here in spirit, that's right. And so. I, I, um, and I heard one of the youngsters did mention his name in that piece just now, so Derrick knows he wants to win it. That's right. So, I, again, I wish them all the luck, and we'll be out here cheering them on. All right. Thanks a lot, Charlotte Aubrey, the daughter of the late Sir Derrick Knowles. We're going to take our first break here from Monique and the Sir Derrick Knowles Junior Celery Garden. We'll be right back with much more. Immediate response when to New York, Houston, then to Atlanta to locate, celebrate, and feature outstanding Bahamians making waves throughout the USA. Monday, February 26th, and Tuesday, February 27th, immediate response broadcasts live from the Bahamas Consulate in London. Join the ZNS radio and television network as we interview Bahamian movers and shakers in and around Great Britain as immediate response continues spanning the globe, identifying standout Bahamians making marks internationally. For more information on how you can place your TV or radio commercials or be a part of the immediate response global series, call 502-3800 or email phoenixinstitute at gmail.com. Sponsored by Fidelity Bank Bahamas Limited. The Royal Bahamas Police Force, the Ministry of Tourism, Checkers Cafe, the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources, Bahamas Retina and Eye Care Services, Bahamas Harvest Church, the Bahamas Development Bank, 
battery and tire specialists, AFD management, Tiki Bikini Hut, the Financial Intelligence Unit, Javon Medical Center, Cafe Channing Noel, and by Art Development. A new year brings a new lineup. Is that a We're back here at the Monarchy Four Show for the Sudibidos Junior Sailing Championship. The boats are getting set to go out there. They are on the water, just being towed to the starting line. They are setting the course, but like I can say the breeze is quite fine, and we are in for some great sailing over the next three days. These youngsters can really maneuver these small crafts on the water. Just one person on the boat, not like the big crew, where we have four, five, and six persons on those class. It's all for yourself, and talking about all for yourself, one of those persons that have won this regatta on numerous occasions, one of the top junior skippers in the country, Joshua Weech. Water since the age of nine years old. Now at age 17, he could be considered a veteran. I got into sailing uh, through my brother, and I really just enjoy the feeling of winning, being out on the water, uh, being free in the boat, and just sailing overall. It's something I really, really enjoy. Joshua Weech sails in the laser class and has won the Nationals on numerous occasions. I feel I'm a very smart sailor, I'm a very fast sailor. Um, you know, I dedicate a lot of my time and put a lot of effort into it, and I genuinely see results. With that in mind, there's only one goal for this regatta. I'm expecting to do really well, podium for sure, um, and hoping to win it. And how much does strategy play maneuvering on the seas? Strategy plays a really, really big part. Um, it's a lot of boat speed, it's a lot of strategy tactics and knowing what to do on the course um, and you know after a lot of time you learn a lot of things and you get used to a lot of things especially sailing in the same place for so long so uh, I think I have a really good idea and understanding of what to do on the course especially here. One day Joshua hopes to sail in the Olympics for the Bahamas so what's after the Junior Nationals for him? I'm trying to qualify for the Worlds uh, coming up in July in Italy so uh, that's the next big step. Joshua Weech, there one of the top junior skippers here in the country. Now joined by Laurie Lowe, double L. I... I'm here, I'm here. Yep, <laughs> double yep, L, she's yep. one of the organizers of this year's regatta. And the boats were in the back there rigging this morning. How many boats do we have registered? Um, good question. I think we have about 100. Yeah, actually, we have a little more than that because we have about 100 in the um, international classes. And then we have another... 16 or 17 in the E-Class. Mm -hmm. So I must say this is bigger than the big boys, National Family Island, and all those other, other regardless around the country. Well, I don't know. I mean, they, 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 have, a, they have as many people, but not as many boats, because, of course, we have uh, all our international class boats are single-handed. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me just now, four minutes out. What is the format? How do they race today? Okay, so in international classes, it's, the racing actually starts four minutes before the race and people are jockeying to get position to get a good start. Explain that. Uh, the race starts four minutes before a race. <laughs> well, so, <laughs> so they're racing from four minutes before the start. They're not actually, um, the race itself hasn't started. So what that means is the racing rules of sailing apply. So they're not allowed, there are certain things they're allowed to do and not allowed to do. Just like driving your car, um, you have a right of way if you're, you know, on the main road. Well, in sailboat racing, there are um, particular positions you can be in where you have power over the other boat. You can make the other boat get out of your way. So, for example, in, again, in cars, the car driving, um, the car in front has the right of way. If you, if, you rear, if you hit somebody in the back of the car, the guy in the back is generally wrong, not the guy in the front. Same thing in sailing. There's, if the boat is on the windward side and they're both on the same tack, the leeward boat has the right of way. In, in sailboat racing, it's about who has the wind, and that decides who has the right of way. And then there's, um, if, if a boat is on starboard, so the sailors are sitting on the starboard side of the boat, that boat has rights over anybody who's sitting on the port side of the boat or the left side of the boat. 
So at five minutes before the start, the, the, they blow a f horn and put a flag up, and, and that tells people get ready for the four minutes when the rules start to apply. Um, at four minutes, another flag goes up, and at one minute that comes down, so the boats know they need to be right at the start line. And I think pretty much from what I'm seeing um, on the, the camera, they're probably getting close to being within the one minute if they're not there um, already. Hard for me to see the flag on the, the screen we're looking at. And which class is that out there? So right, so right now this is the Optimist boat. Um, this is the boat in which our youth sailors are having the best uh, results internationally. So, for example, in this fleet we have Finley uh, McKinney, who um, went to, was invited to the 50th, to a special uh, event internationally, which um, was an invitation to the top 50 sailors in the world. So he's sailing in this event. Um, we have a few other international sailors, uh, Mary Jack Nash, um, and I'm going to be really bad here. I'm going to pull out my crib sheet, mm -hmm. if I have it here still, yep, so that I can uh, find out who else that's sailed internationally is out there. Um, maybe nobody. So uh, Taryn McKinney, she sailed internationally. I think Javian Rakeen has sailed internationally. Callum Pritchard uh, was just the only Bahamian to attend a major regatta in uh, in Florida a couple weeks ago. So how do we set the course uh, here this morning for this for this race? So today um, they've set a windward leeward, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit biased, mm -hmm. so that it can be a little bit closer to the people in the Montague watching. Mm -hmm. So basically they're going to sail upwind, downwind, upwind, downwind. Two, two laps. Yep, two laps. And, um, uh, and the format for the rest of the day, each, each uh, division will have two races? Each division will have two races. Um, and most of the classes will be sailing a windward leeward. Uh, the Optimus Green, we will sail them a, a triangle course. So sailing downwind is more likely for people to tip when they're not experienced. So the Optis, we put them on a triangle course. But these, uh, to me, I'm not a sailor, but these look like perfect conditions out there for sailing today for these youngsters. It's good conditions for the, for the competent ones, for the, the beginners. Some of the beginners might be a little scared today. Uh, some of them might tip. It's nice conditions, though, because it's pretty flat water from this direction. Um, as the breeze turns to the east, it'll be a little bit more choppy and um, a little bit harder work for the lighter sailors. When we talk about the beginners. How young are some of the sailors in this yes, competition? Uh, so I think the youngest sailors we have here are nine, okay. and they'd be in the Optimus Green Fleet. Uh, they're coming, I think, out of Harbor Island, uh, Eleuthera, and Long Island, and Grand Bahama also. Yep. Uh, during the press conference, I, I, I asked the question, how are points scored and how do you accumulate your points so at the end of the day we decide a champion? Okay, so it's easier to count when you count one for first. <laughs> so it's called a low point scoring system, and it's effectively whatever place you are, it's one, the, what, that's the points you get. Um, if you don't finish a race, you get as many points as there are sailors in the in the event. Mm -hmm. so, so not finishing is, is so high, a bad so high, thing. So high point is not the best. The best. High point is not the best. Okay. And what goes talk? And I, I was over by the yacht club early this morning. I saw some of the youngsters rigging. If you don't know what rigging is, that is getting their boats yeah. ready, putting up their sails. How much preparation goes into getting these not so big sloops ready for comp for sailing on the water? So um, the opties are pretty pretty basic. Uh, the sails are always rigged already, mm -hmm. makes life a lot easier, and we store them standing up. So basically the kids got to drop the, the mast with the sail on it in the boat, tie it in, uh, affix their main sheet and their vang, put on their blades. So these are the lines, the main sheet and vang are lines that control the main or the sail, and the blades are the things that help you steering and keep the boat upright. So, you know, really, if your boat is all rigged, in, if, if your boat is in good condition and you made sure it was all good yesterday, rigging it will take them 10 minutes. Um, but, you know, 
Some people like to fiddle a little bit. And I saw a lot, of talk, a lot of talking was going on yeah, over there. Yeah, you're having fun. Go. They're having fun. Okay, and as we can see some uh, on the monitor right now, we can see the red flag is up. What does that mean? Okay, so the red flag is the line flag. Mm -hmm. So we did have a, a prep flag up earlier, but I think they have um, postponed the start. There was something wrong. Um, I can't tell if there's another flag up from this direction. Uh, they don't appear to be moving any marks. So maybe, oh, I see another flag, yes. I, I think that's a blue and white flag, so we're back in the preparatory phase of another start. So sometimes they will um, postpone a race or stop, stop the starting sequence uh, if they think that maybe the line is not fair. And when the line is not fair, quite often the good sailors let you know because they're stacked up at one end of the line. And so a good race committee will will check if the wind is shifting. Sometimes you want to adjust your, your start line. Um, or if they think there's going to be too many over, they might postpone a race and start again. And there are no engines at all on these boats, so they are really using tactic strategy and using the wind direction. The wind is the engine. Well, the wind and the sail. So the sail, sail harnesses the wind and, and creates the power. The, the rudder turns the boat. Now, so, how many boats are in this class right now, if you can tell I it? think we have 31. 31. Boys and girls compete. Boys and girls, Boys and girls yeah. compete together, but some may say this is the Opti class, right? Optimus, the yeah. Optimus class. Mm -hmm. This is the Optimus class. Some may say that is not fair. Boys and girls competing together. Well, you know, so sailboat is a little bit about weight, mm -hmm. and it's about intelligence. Mm -hmm. And if you're the right weight, you can sail boys and girls. I sail against the guys all the time. Um, there are times when when they're better than me. Uh, conditions, they have strong, you know, guys have stronger upper body strength. When you get kids at this age, um, there's not a lot of difference when you're dealing with the size of the kids. Uh, it's when, you know, you start hitting puberty that the guys start getting the, the big upper body and, and I have a harder time with the guys in the heavier air than I do in the lighter air. And Optimus, give us some of the dimensions of, of, the, of these boats. So an Optimus, you can actually build an Optimus out of an um, eight-foot piece of plywood. Wow. So it's six feet long, I think, and about ten feet high. With one sail. One sail. <laughs> they look like bathtubs. They're little <laughs> bathtubs, but this is the biggest sailboat class in the world. Um, in the last Olympics, almost every... Almost every sailor in the last Olympics started in the Optimus class. Uh, and, and that is the dream of most of these youngsters to get to travel and get to Olympics. And we, we were speaking with some of them, and their biggest joy is going away to these international meets and meeting new friends with mm -hmm. uh, friendship that lasts a long time. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, it's a great community. You know, it's, it's like a cross between a, a homecoming and a family reunion, except everybody's doing something that you love to do. And all over the world, you know, you, you, I have friends all over the world from sailing, and I've known them for longer than all these kids have been alive. Um, it's a great community. So can you tell us what's happening right, right now, if you, if you can see it on the screen? Uh, yeah, it looks like they've started. They've started. Okay. Yeah, they have started. And we're a little too far away for me to tell you who's leading. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what is, the, what, is, what is going on right now in this first week? What, what does a sailor try to do here off, off the start? Okay, so it looks like one sailor went back because they were over early. Um, so unlike, say, swim meets or track meets, just because you're over early or you start before the gun, you can actually go back and exonerate yourself. So you have to go back behind the start line, and then you can start again. So, and also in a sailboat race, you have about, depending on the, the whatever the race committee decides before the event starts, you have a particular amount of time after the start to actually get across the start line. So for example, if you have a, a problem with your boat that you need to fix, you might be able to fix it and still start the race four minutes late. Uh, so when you're starting a race, you're jockeying to be in the front, but not over the line. So you get a clear lane. 
because you want clean air. Clean air is air that's not disturbed by any other boats. So when you get into a big fleet, it's you have lanes, and, and if there's a sailboat above you, it's, you get bad air. So it's not like, say, take a look at cycling. Um, when you do with the, um, like the people sailing, sorry, the people cycling in the Tour de France, they stay in the pack. So you cycle behind somebody else and you get a draft from them. Well, in sailboat racing, if you're behind somebody else, you get bad air and, and you don't go as fast. So if you see boats that are, um, sometimes you have match racing. In match racing, there's two boats on the course at one time, that's it. And one boat is trying to control the other boat using the rules and trying to give them bad air. But are we already seeing a lot of separation? Some boats going this yep. way, some boats going that way. Yeah. yeah. So one, you're trying to get a lane, so free air, so nobody around you. Two, people have different ideas about what they think is the right way to go. The wind, the wind is never constant. The wind has Drop, uh, goes up velocity up. variations and directional variations. Uh, today, with this with this direction, um, we're pretty okay. There might be some shifts on the left side of the course from the buildings on Paradise Island. It, it's amazing what those buildings can do to change the direction of the wind. Uh, no, don't you don't want to get catch in a in a stall or, or what you call it a puff? A puff is a good thing if you if you harness it right. So, you know, if it's too much for you, you might spin out, uh, lose control of the boat, maybe go for an unscheduled swim, as in tipping the boat. Um, uh, but generally speaking, if you harness it right, it, it's, it's a good thing. You don't want to be in the lull. Well, as an organizer, it's, it's a lot of safety. There are persons who may be wondering, all oh, those young, a lot of youngsters are there, there on the boat. What if one tips over, one falls over? How quick can we get them? back to shore, they, they know how to swim, all that stuff. So all our sailors have to know how to swim. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a basic swim test they have to pass, but it's also mandatory that they're wearing a life jacket at all times while on the water. This is a, it's a safety thing, so this is a good thing. Um, if they flip, they know how to bring their boats back up. Some kids are faster than others. Um, the opties are a problem because they don't self-bail. So if you flip, there's a real big penalty there. Uh, you spend about five minutes bailing the boat out. And how long does a race normally take? I know it probably depends on the wind and the direction you're going. Uh, no, actually, it depends on what the parameters are set in the race instructions. The race committee has a target time limit that they want to, to meet. Oh, so there's no finish line? Oh, there's a finish line, yeah, yeah. But basically, today we're targeting the, the international class races at about 20 minutes. Okay, so they'll each each three will be out there for just 20 minutes. Yeah, 20 minutes. So how much can you do in 20 minutes? Plenty. Yeah. Uh, you see the race course; <laughs> they can get from there to there and back twice, probably uh -huh. in 20 minutes. We'll see. The the race committee is making a gauge on the first race, and they may shorten it or lengthen it depending on what the the wind requires. And, and of course, the the courses for the green fleet, which are the beginners, it'll be a much smaller course. So can you give us an idea of who's out front now? Who's leading? You need your binoculars for that. I need the binoculars for that. So. And they don't go on as far as the A, B, and C class. They're right. They're right in shore. Well, so when we sail big events, it's really too far for me to tell. When we sail really big events, um, we have big, ra bigger race courses, and we have them all over the bay. For this regatta, we're trying to put them in closer so people on the shore have a better view and we have a little bit more of an entertainment factor. So I'm going to take a look. There's a couple of sailors going up on the left as I might be able to tell who they are. So I think one is Mary Jack Nash. Mm -hmm. so um, I have to check. Yep, one is Mary Jack Nash. And the other one may be... Um, Michael Knowles. Okay. These are the two furthest ones yeah. on the left. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean they're in the lead, but I think they're doing pretty good. And the the boat that's third from the left is probably ahead. 150. I have to pull my cheat sheet out yeah. to figure this one out. 
That's one that had the full sense. Okay, 150 is actually, I think, uh, 150 is Callum Pritchard. Slow, 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 slow. Yep. So, uh, yeah, so we've got Mary Jack Nash, Callum Pritchard, and probably uh, Michael Knowles, who are the top three. So we do have a young female out there competing with the boys, making her mark. Mm -hmm. Beautiful sight here at the Monocue Foreshore. And you can see, see that some of the talking and the maneuvering these youngsters are doing. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. A little too shaky on the camera there <laughs> for me to tell on the left one. Yep. So are we watching the drone now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Look at that beautiful water, eh? Yes. Can't beat that anywhere. Basically, see the bottom of the mm -hmm. sea from here. Plenty of places we go to sail, you stick your foot in the water, and once you get to your knee, you can't see your foot. Mm. And this <laughs> is one of the best harbors in the world. When they had the international sailors come here a few years ago, they talk about this, they pride about this harbor being one of the best mm -hmm. they've sailed all over the world. Yep. Yep. It has, you know, it's it's got really good conditions. The chop is, is challenging. But we get good winds and, and it's warm water and yeah, it's a lot of fun to sail here. And you know, the water here is a little saltier, so that means the boats sit up in the water a little higher, which means they, um, they go fast, faster, sooner than in other places. So, you know, if you know anything about a, a, a motorboat, it bogs down and then it gets up on a plane. So it's almost like it's flying. Same thing happens in a sailboat, not necessarily going upwind, but on the reaches or downwind, you can make the boats pop up and start going really fast. So some of these sailors, they're on the Optina, they'll be sitting on the laser as well? Or? Uh, no, so in the international, a lot of the kids in the, in the international classes will be sailing in the E-class as well, but these boats are pretty much by size and age. Mm -hmm. So in the Optimist, you cannot sail this after 15. But you also pretty much don't want to sail it if you're more than 125 pounds. Okay. You're just not going to win. So, so sailing is kind of like wrestling and, and boxing. There are there are size and weight boats, and there are boats that you you know you, we're never going to put an 80 pound kid on a laser. No. What is the average weight and, and the age for a laser? So the laser is basically um, most of the kids who are sailing lasers are at least 11. Um, but you got to be pretty big. So, so the laser, we start them at about 110 pounds in the smallest of the boats. So there are four, there are three different types of laser. Um, same hull, just a smaller mast and a, and a smaller sail. Uh, none of our kids are sailing the full rig. They're a little too small. The full rig is the male equipment in the Olympics. Um, but males sail all the rigs. And girls can theoretically sail all the all the rigs, but I'm not sure I know any girls that sail the laser full. And, and we're now seeing the wind start to pick up. Yeah. Will this have an effect on the on the skippers out there today? Um, Especially they, they started off with one set of wind, the wind has picked up a bit. Yeah, and there you have coming around the mark. That's Finley McKinney. So he's another one of our international sailors, and he's got a substantial lead on the rest of the fleet. And he's yeah, he's the one that went to the the best of the best in international youth opti sailors. The top 50 in the world. Wow, what an accomplishment, top mm -hmm. 50 in the world at this young age. And uh, here sitting in the junior sailing regardless of Bahamas, you see what you have to do. You have to come on down and support these youngsters. They are some of the best in the world. And when they go all over the world, the best fans come out to see. They tell nobody else has the better fans mm -hmm. than Bahamas. So come on down. We're here until Saturday. We're sitting all day today here at Monaco. I'm Charles Fisher, joined by Laurie Lone. Laurie, now we're starting to get some better oh. shots. 150 again. Getting out there back to the overhead shot. Right. We're seeing them now, like just in a line. We saw them all bundled up a few minutes ago. Now they're out there in a the line. Yeah, so they're in the line to get to the offset mark. And you probably saw one of the boats there doing a circle, something that none of the other boats were doing. Uh, I take it that he must have hit the mark and he was he was uh, exonerating himself from, from hitting the mark. So you're not allowed to hit the mark. And again, in, in international racing, uh, sailboat racing, the kids self-police quite often, mm -hmm. and if you hit a mark, you're 
you can result, you're not supposed to hit the mark. So if you do hit the mark, the way you exonerate yourself is by doing a, a, a 360 degree turn. So in this race, we're seeing all of them going around the board at the same time. Yeah. It's the giveaway, giveaway rule. Um, there is a giveaway rule there, but and, and they're all they all appear to be uh, um, complying with it. But I think one of the kids just didn't um, make adjustments for the current, or perhaps he stuck his nose in somewhere and and uh, had to hit the mark to avoid hitting the boat. Because if he had hit the boat, he would have had to do two 360-degree turns. Hitting the mark is only one 360-degree turn. Never out there with that beautiful drone shot. Mm -hmm. We have Randy Nose out there on the seas. Sadness so Coop producing this broadcast here this morning of the Sidova Nose Junior Sailing Nationals. Charles Fisher along with Laurie Lowe. And Laurie, I know you wish you were out there on the water, but I'm pleased that you're here. I'm given glad to be here. Be, be giving behemoths an update on just how everything goes here in Opti Sailing. And we can see now, now you're starting to see the real separ separation and they're making it look like they are out there. Hmm. And I hope that's the young lady, because I'm pulling for the, the ladies today. Not, <laughs> I, I should not, but let's give the ladies a chance. So the young lady, the top young lady in this class is Mary Jack Nash. She's from Lifer Key, and she sails BAH 77. And, um, yeah, she's the top gal. We have sailors in this event from uh, Long Island, Grand Bahama. Uh, Abaco? Uh, no, no sailors from Abaco could make it. I think, um, I think they had some issues with school. Mm -hmm. So we have kids from Eleuthera, Harbor Island, Exuma, Long Island, and New Providence. This is the junior version of the best of the best, and we're seeing the best now starting to separate themselves on the water. Perfect sailing conditions. The winds have picked up a bit here at Montague, but that is not stopping the fun and excitement on the water. There they go. And, the, and that is a real big lead. Yeah, that that's is a good a, lead. That is a very big lead. Let's see if we can get... So this, this conditions is favoring him. He's still one of the, the lighter ones, but it's flat water. And when it's flat the light, in heavy air, it helps the lighter ones. If it was choppy, he'd be having a little harder time. But let's not, um, let's not, let's not dis, disrespect the fact that he's one of the top sailors. So and, who is this out front? Uh, this is Finley McKinney. Uh -huh. Finley, Finley and McKinney Lambert from Eleuthera Sailing Academy. Okay, but like the big boats, they don't put no lead or anything in the water, it's just in no the lead. boat? No, no lead. No lead? Or no, no extra weight. You're only allowed your body weight and, and reasonable clothes. Mm -hmm. So there used to be a time where uh, sailors would put on a, a jacket that wasn't a life jacket, but it was a jacket with tubes they filled with water mm -hmm. to get add weight. And they, they banned those because people were hurting their backs. So just the sailors' body weight they compete with. So that is Finley McKinney out front. Finley McKinley Lambert, yep. He is out front from Eleuthera. Mm -hmm. Folks in Eleuthera, you're on your way to winning the first serious race here in the Optimus class. He really is like around old, the mark, old, yep. Around the mark. He's really showing his experience. He said he sailed with, well, invited to the top 50 in the world yeah. sailing, so he has a lot of experience mm -hmm. over the, the rest. And, and most of our, um, so, so you know, the, there's a progression through the fleets and, and through size and age. So he's the top one, and he's just about aging into being one of the older ones. So we lost about six or eight of our top kids that were older than him mm -hmm. out of the fleet in the last year or two. So, so he's he's the king of the king of the Optimus class right now. Oh, look at that! Somebody decided to tack, and see they're on starboard, but they kept they kept clear of the boat coming down. They were nice to them. <laughs> so all the boats coming around the mark right now are on port because they're sitting on the left side of the boat and the sails on the right side. And port has to always give way to starboard. Look, like this race is a rough for, for, for Lambert. 
Well, you never know. You, you, you know, something you, you, drastic you, has to happen. You never know. There could always be a wind shift that he doesn't catch. Right? So what will happen is uh, it's going to start playing tactics. The boat behind him will try and split and go the different, a different direction. If he's smart, he will cover the majority of the boats behind him that are closest to him. So covering is when you try and stay to, immediately to weather of the boat that's behind you. So that if the wind shifts, you're it's shifting with you first. And on each class, will they set the course different? Uh, no, for the Sunfish Laser, it'll probably be the same. They might stretch it out a bit longer. Uh, for the Green Fleet, yes, there will be a slightly different course because we don't want those uh, Green Fleeters to have to go dead downwind. So they'll sail two races today, or how, what, 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 what do you... So, we, so there will be a total of eight races today mm. uh, in five classes because, well, there'll be ten races, but two of the races, two of the classes will be on the course at the same time, so... Um, it'll make it a little more interesting for us and uh, a little more interesting for them. So, yes, we'll get, we'll get, and then we get the E class. So, there will be 12 races that's, today. That's what I'm looking forward Ten. to. That, Ten that, that E, e class. class, yeah, mm -hmm. sailing in this regard. Uh, they, 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 they sail in that in the national family, and they've got to, but now they get a sail by themselves, not with getting the big no, boat. No, yeah, yeah, no adults in the boats, yeah. So no adults, and so they, they, yeah. Watch for Exuma because. Yeah, I think, how you, you know what I was thinking just now? I well, just say, what's for those youngsters from out of Exuma? Well, Exuma has has the boats in hand, right? Yeah. They have six boats to go play in. Um, our kids in Nassau really haven't had any boats that are theirs to play in. Uh, the National Sailing School has just uh, acquired a Buzzy Roll boat, mm -hmm. and we're in the process of getting it. We were hoping it was ready for this event, but it's not. Uh, and then the British High Commission has... Uh, that, um, that boat. Commissioned a boat, yeah. and they're going to leave it here for a year and then decide which club they'd like to give it to. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So, and I don't know. I mean, I don't know if Long Island has been practicing in the boats they have in Long Island. I don't know about Grand Bahama. I'm sure Grand Bahama. Grand Bahama bought, brought two boats, so maybe their kids have been practicing. You know, the, it, once you learn how to sail one boat, you can sail any boat. Mm -hmm. You just have to figure out the nuances of that boat. So, you know, if you learn how to drive a, a Daewoo Tiku, uh, a Lincoln Continental is a really big car, but it's the same theory. You just got to remember how wide and how big the car is. Now, we didn't hear a cannon to start the race or a cannon to end the race. The rules different? No, there was a cannon. It was just over there. Actually, they were using a horn. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, so the... The, the kids can all hear the horn next to the race course, but uh, from where we are, the winds are in the wrong direction for us to hear that. So that's why we had the flags. We are into the first race here this morning at Montague, the Optimus class, mm -hmm. Lambert McKinney. Finley, Lam Finley, Finley McKinney Lambert, yeah. He, he is your leader yeah. out front. Yeah. Sailing with it. With it being out so far, it's, it's hard to see sometimes. It's hard to see sometimes. And, and you know, the, the, the Bahamian sloops have the right idea. They color their boats different colors. In international glasses, you don't really want to color your boat a different color because it's easier to spot you on the start if you're over early. Mm -hmm. So we, they try and keep them all the same color. Uh, now, the sunfish have the colorful sails. Some of these kids, we had them put decals on their boats. And... Um, I think you'll see that more in the Green Fleet. Uh, the championship sailors didn't want to put the decals on it because they figured it might affect the sail flow, the wind flow over their sail. <laughs> the, these kids are serious, you yeah. know. They, yeah, they, they don't want to mess with their ability to, to win the race. And, and sometimes two seconds is a, all the difference. And look, look, if we can see on the yeah. screen, he is way out front. Yeah. 180. So 180 is actually, um, let's see, who's 180? should know that. John Hartley, so he's the son of the British High Commissioner. Okay. He's, he's probably out there watching a sunfield. He probably is, yeah. Optimus class. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at it. 
and the, and, and the separation. Uh, is, the, is it supposed to be this much of a separation? I, I... Yeah, there can be. Yeah, there can be. You know, sometimes you get you get them really close. Um, this is a pretty broad-based group of kids, so you know, if it had been last year, we probably would have had four people at the front fighting. Mm -hmm. But three of those kids have moved into the into the laser. And these kids go just about every other day, just training, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's mm -hmm. not like the big sleuth A, B, and C class where they only can go now and again. But these guys go like every weekend, every t every time they get it, they go down the water. You know, there's there's probably 10,000 kids sailing these boats in the world. So when you go to an international regatta, you got to train, mm -hmm. and that's what our kids want to do. So, you know, they they it's you got to keep training. It's amazing how much time other kids put in the boat in other what, in other countries. One thirty, we see passing. One thirty is from Exuma, and that's Heidi Ampleman. Okay. Yep. And that looks like Mary Jack Nash. Yeah, that is. I can see the 77 on the sail. Ah, uh, sorry, you guys aren't looking at the same thing as me. Yeah, we're looking at the one in... <laughs> we're on the drone, yeah. 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 So we're back in the corner there. The young lady right there, number... 77? Seven, yes. Yeah, that's Mary Jack Nash. Yes. Yeah. That's her back up on the screen, Mary Jack Nash. She looks quite relaxed there. Yeah. She's a good sailor. Okay, we, we're talking about the division from Opti. To, uh, you start off at Opti. Well, you start off when you start off, what, what, what your size is. Yeah. So, you know, we have kids that are starting sailing at 13, 14, and they're just too big for the Opti. You don't want to get an Opti at 130 pounds. Mm -hmm. Or if you're like 5'8", mm -hmm. you're just, you know, you're a little too tall to get under the boom. So um, we start the bigger kids in the Sunfish because it's a more forgiving boat than the Laser. Um, the smaller kids start in the Optis because it's a great, it's a great boat for... Most persons may be thinking, like, you started off to because you're 7 and 8, then yep. when you reach 9, 10, yep. you move to the sun. Uh, sunfish? Yes. Oh, well, no, it's a, it's a question of size, really. I mean, you don't want to put an 80-pound kid in a sunfish. It's, it's, why? It's not fun anymore. I mean, it's fun when it's windy and it's, it's on a reach, but it's not fun going up wind. You can't win. You can't win. You know, that's like putting a, 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 a light welterweight against a heavyweight. Great, yes. Now I'm starting to understand right. the Optimus Sunfish laser class. I thought it went on age, yeah. but it is on weight. More side, yeah, size. The way you can maneuver the boat out there on the seas. Mm -hmm. You have to have the right weight to control the boat. Oh, it looks like somebody had a little swim. Or maybe not a swim, maybe their mast wasn't tied in properly. They do learn how to keep their boats under in shape, because if it... If you have a problem on the race course during a race, you cannot get somebody outside to help you. You have to fix it yourself. Okay. If you get somebody outside helping you, then you are out of the race. It's not like in the Tour de France where the guy's wheel breaks and the team leader's there with a new wheel. No, you can't do that. You can only do that between races. Someone will say of a slow moving race, but if you're out there on the water, you'll really see how fast these kids are moving. Mm -hmm. uh, the chance to watch some of the bigger boats at the regardless. And being on shore is a different feeling than being out there on the water and seeing what they are really do going through. Absolutely. Absolutely. People think that they're just sitting in the boat, right? Mm -hmm. They're not actually just sitting in the boat. They're they're moving every time. And, and there you got Finley, well, that's Finley McKinney Lambert. Uh, in one, one, one. Mm. Um, they're always moving. We, when it's windy, we, we say to the parents, oh boy, they can sleep good tonight. Because mm -hmm. they, they, they get off the water and they've been working the whole time. It's a really good sport for kids with ADD. Oh, mm -hmm. Wow. Interesting to hear that. They like swimming, you know, they're, they're always working. And they're using their mind. You know, uh, sailboat racing is mm. called chess on the water. Lord, how long have you been around this? <laughs> I don't want to, I didn't, I didn't ask your age. No, that's okay. So <laughs> I think I started racing when I, I started sailing when I was eight. Oh, okay. Um, I stopped. And then I got into a boat that was a two-man boat when I was 13. And I still sail that boat. Okay. And it's fun. Mm -hmm. it's how, fun. Is, how much fun is, is it? teaching these new generation of skippers? You know, 
It's fantastic because it, it it's so fun to take a kid who, you know, all kids, right? They're, they're, they're told what to do. They don't have any control really over much. We put them in a boat. We teach them how to sail the boat. We teach them how to make decisions. We teach them that not making a decision is making a decision. And so now they are in control. They learn how to control the boat. They learn how to control themselves. It's fantastic. I saw, I saw a video um, of, a, of a Dutch man who was, whose kids were sailing. And they said that he was being interviewed. And they're like, how, how, how'd you get involved in this sport? He said, you know, I don't sail. But I took my kid to sailing one day. You know, they did all kinds of sports. I took him to sailing one day, and when they left the dock, they had this sort of look of fear and trepidation in their faces. And when they came back in, they had this look on their face that they've never gotten in any other sport, and they still get that look on their face. For me, this is what, what, what I love about sailing. This does this for me, too, and I think it does it. doesn't do it for all kids. But the ones who, who, who get the bug, there's a sport out there for everybody. Not everybody likes sailing, but I try and get the kids to, to stay long enough in sailing to get to a level of competency. So when it's windy like this, they think that's fun. And a lot of parents may be watching, how can I get my kid involved in, in sailing? Okay, so the first thing, first thing they need to know is they need to be able to swim. Mm -hmm because they have a basic swim test, they have to test in, to, to pass in order to sail with us. Um, and then just, you know, approach the clubs. Um, unfortunately, we have more kids now interested in sailing than we have people that can teach them. Uh, that's certainly the case in, in Nassau. Um, the, the sailing club has a program, the Life for Keys School has a program, and we have a, a program at the Nassau Yacht Club, which is the Bahamas National Sailing School. Uh, and we are trying to work with government with their pilot school programs. And our, our biggest issue is uh, lack of... Folks. Lack of, well, more lack of instructors. Okay. Because, you know, when we, teach, when we teach kids, we prefer to have at least one instructor for every three kids. It's a safety, safety game. And we can see the minister responsible yeah. for sailing. Clay Sweeting is joining us out here. We're going to try and pull him in. Let me see if we can get him in. And he, he's dressed the part. Oh, yeah, looking good. Yeah, looking good. Looking like a youngster the other day. Uh, as we continue to watch, and they're coming around the marker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look. Oh, see, and they, they, see, there's a little current out there. See, they're not making the mark. If you're looking at that top right picture, or you're looking at the... Um, the, the drone footage, you can see that those boats are, are having a problem with the current. Mm -hmm. Shall I move to the left? Okay. So, yeah, so they had a real problem getting around that top mark. There's a lot of current out there. Yes, sir. Nice to see you. And even that's the top two, two boats. Well, a couple of the top, a couple of the top boats, they, they misjudged the mark. I see the next one's doing the same thing. Now, they, at least they don't have another boat next to them. So I think, I think there's a little bit of a lull in the wind there. And the kids aren't, aren't adjusting for the current. There's a lot more current out at the top mark than there is at the bottom mark because of the, the way the course and is And you were talking up. about how much the buildings over Paradise Island can affect mm -hmm. the, 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 the movement. Mm-hmm. So I think the next couple of boats are, have taken note of the issues that the boats ahead have had, and hopefully they won't encounter the same issues with the mark. Well, Laurie, we have a very important guest joining us here on the broadcast. Yeah, the minister responsible for sailing. He must be one of the proudest persons here in the Bahamas because he got sailing to become the <laughs> national sport. Well, it's the clay sweeting you dressed the party. You're, yeah. look, you're looking like you a know. real island boy today. Thank you, man. I was glad when they told me we had this today so I could come just normal. <laughs> Get out of that coat suit and, <laughs> you know and what come I mean? out here. How, 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 how do you feel to have the junior so do with Knowles yeah. Junior Sailing Regatta here in the 242? Well, well, this is exciting for us because it speaks to the legacy of Sir Durward and, and we to pay respect to, to him and, and what he meant to sailing. Um, but even more importantly, is to have over 200 children out here today 
um, from different family islands to contribute and to, to uh, take part in, in sailing as a national sport. So for us, it's, and, you know, we had persons from five different family islands, um, Eleuthera, uh, Aksuma, Grand Bahama, um, Long Island. So it's, it's exciting for us, and then persons are out of New Providence. Um, so it's exciting for us to see them contribute to the development of the sport as well. Laurie, we were watching the race. You mind telling them who was leading the race and where they're from? Uh, yeah, so the leader of the race at the moment is Finley McKinney Lambert out of a Luther Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, that's, out of, that's out of my constituency. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's what, it, that's what it, Laurie intended to bring that, uh, that big smile. And how important was it to give those these youngsters the same atmosphere you give to the best of the best? Yeah, I mean, you know, this atmosphere here, um, when you have best of the best, really, the, the kids will last best of the best. We're able to do a little area for the playground for the children. But this um, function is just all about the kids and, and the atmosphere and the camaraderie and the friendship um, that persons from different islands can, you know, sometimes you, you don't get to interact like, like you would um, with different children from different islands. So to provide this atmosphere and to say, look, this is really about you, um, we appreciate, you know, the time you're putting in to develop the sport. And as, as they learn uh, through the lasers and, and the sunfish and these other boats and move to the E-class, then eventually um, so they start to sail in C-class vessels and B-class, which, which helps to develop the sport even, even further. But what class can he go on? Oh, he can probably <laughs> sail on laser. Yeah, laser or the E? Oh, uh, he can sail on E. Well, you know, not in the short term. Yeah, he can sail on E. He no, sail you know that. Yeah. You know, during the I, National Family Island, that is a rivalry uh -huh. between the ministers. Who's uh -huh. the best sailor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah, yeah. that's up and coming. I, we hope to have um, we hope to have a, a good amount of persons. I think last year we had four. We had myself, Minister Monroe. Uh, John Pender and, and the Deputy Prime Minister. Um, so this year we hope to have more persons be a part of that, that race. And, uh, getting this together and bringing these youngsters from out of Grand Bahama, Eleuthera, Harbor Island, here, mm -hmm. normally they regarded be in the next family island. Now some people wants to travel to the uh -huh. family island, but the family island persons want to come here as well. So I, I think it's a mix. And, and when I when I spoke to it, when we announced um, the Sir Derwood Knowles um, Championship. Um, we spoke about New Providence and then hopefully moving it to different family islands because a part of this is growing economies, right? And growing economies in the family islands and giving uh, children the opportunity to see what other family islands are about. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their own culture, their food, the way how they do things. First so we, boat's finishing. <laughs> so, so we hope to... Um, to do that. So, Laurie, was that finishing? I think that's Finley McKinney Lambert finishing. What? There you go. <laughs> Look at that. Sorry, I, I, I did interrupt you. One, one, one percent to the south. <laughs> you got to make sure that. Yeah, got to make sure that you're. You, 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 make sure, yeah. yeah. I know. I know. Mom's happy. Uh huh. Go on, Paul. And, and yeah. yes, and family island persons yeah. able to watch this on television. Hmm. They may not be able to come here. They get to see the big boys on television. Yeah. Now they're getting to see the youngsters as well. Yeah. This, this is helping them. Right. Yeah. And then and we haven't had this since since. COVID, um, and, you know, we're trying to bring everything back, and I think that, well, nationally, you can see the excitement around sailing. Uh, Best of the Best Regatta um, was one of the largest, if not the largest, we ever had. Mm. The National Family Island Regatta in Aksuma was the largest ever um, in, in Aksuma, and, and we continue to build upon this in different islands, and we have other islands looking to have their own regattas where they haven't had them in the past. And that was my next question. How has the reception been since sailing has been named a national sport? It's like, we know what this national sport is. <laughs> now I'm speaking to Commissioner Hartley this morning, he said, oh, you're too crooked away, but I'm now glad that sailing <laughs> is the national sport. Yeah, and, and, and they have a, a vessel that they're donating. Uh, yeah. um, E class, Mark, yeah, um, and you know, I, Mark's supposed to, he's supposed to build the one for Eruthra next. Mm -hmm. um, so that one hopefully will start pretty soon, and and you know that may promise to um, the people in Central and South Eruthra that they'll have their own E class vessel as well. Fantastic, Laurie. That sounds good. Looks sounds like. That E class, you say, you know, you didn't know where they, they were going, to, but Eluth was going to get there once. So the, mm -hmm. the yeah. one that the commissioners tonight that can go somewhere else. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we already we already have the one named the Eluth so uh, oh. yeah, sh yeah. sugar loaf pineapple, you know. <laughs> 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 All right, where did that name yeah. come from? <laughs> sugar loaf pineapple. Well, 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 pineapple, the the pineapple that comes from Eluth mm -hmm. that yep. people 
ravage about every year. Yeah. The the type is called the sugar loaf. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the the sweet pineapple that they, they grow in Gregory Town. Best pineapple in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You must give kudos to your team putting these events together, the best of the best, mm -hmm. traveling from island to island. This junior regatta. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is that you know the team at, at Ministry of Works and Family Island Affairs, especially the team at local government, um, the regatta desk is is par none. Um, they've they've put these shows together. Um, and a lot of times the ministers just show up, and but they don't realize the work that goes behind the scenes, um, the crunch time, trying to get it done for, in regards to deadlines and getting the, the organization, everything, you know. So we have a great team, um, and they continue to su surpass and surprise me every time. One thing I can say, the image of sailing has definitely changed since it has been named the national sport. More persons are coming out. One time ago, they would say, only the so-and-so will sail on these boats. <laughs> only so-and-so go to regatta. But yeah. it looks like mommy, Grammy, great Grammy. Everybody wants to be a part of these right. regattas now. Yeah, and I think what's important is that we continue to develop. You know, we build a national sailing school. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that's on our drawing board. So that persons who would not uh, um, take advantage of sailing in the past would, would be, um, you know, we have included schools throughout New Providence working on with the Ministry of Education to develop the sport. So we're putting a lot of focus on, on how we're going to develop and include persons from all walks of life um, in the sailing. Now you update us on what's going on on the screen as the sailors so, continue to come yeah, in? so I think we've had a few more finishers coming in. I, I'm not sure of the, who they are. It's I'm a little far away to see them. I need the bionic eyes, right? <laughs> but it looks like they're coming in fast and furious. Look at this group of four together, or six. You look at it looks like looks like there may be some overtaking going on before they get to the finish. Man, they can handle them boats too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it. They can handle them. And unlike with the big boats where three and four guys mm -hmm. on it's just them, the wind and the sail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nothing like the on the water. No, <laughs> nothing like being on the water. And when you get to see the uh, the Green Fleet this afternoon, just before the E class, you will begin to appreciate the competency level of the kids in this in this race. Right? How long does it take for a, a, a kid to learn to sail the, these vessels? So you know, some kids pick it up better than others. It's mm -hmm. some kids are naturals, mm -hmm. but basically we have a summer sailing camp, and that's two weeks. And in two weeks, they can figure out how to sail. The really good ones, we might actually be able to put them in, in a race. Um, not a race like this, but mm. probably the Green Fleet race. Um, so on average, within six months of starting, if they did the summer camp and they're sailing a couple of times in the, a week in the fall, by the next summer, they're probably in the championship fleet. I mean, it's how important is it to get that National Sailing School started? I mean, it's very important, and we spoke with Laurie and, and her team about it. Um, see, the, the, the thing for me is getting persons who would not be able to have access to, to boats or training and all of that. And they've done a wonderful job in, in doing that and giving persons opportunity um, because sailing is, is an expensive sport. Yeah. But, you know, when you get donors and people's interested in developing the sport and you get, you get the government to support it on the back end with, with support of um, Laurie and... and, and you know, National Sail Bahamas Nas National yeah. Sailing School. Yeah. You know, so the, with the help of government and some very generous uh, private donors, we have a great program uh, open to all kids who are interested. Uh, the only problem we have now is we need some more instructors. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so it's we we're growing, and it's just getting the getting the instructors in. But the only limitations we have right now are not really not really so much the boats, but the instructors. No, just so payments are listening. We need some instructors. We also need those funds as well. Don't leave that out. We need those funds to make sure that these yeah. kids get to go to these international events and make the Bahamas proud, yeah. like to do what did a few years ago, who this regard is being named after. Yeah. And talking about to do it, I had his daughter on, Charlotte. She is very impressed that you guys are carrying on his legacy. Mm -hmm. He had a regatta when he was 100. Her <laughs> mom is going to be 100 in September wow. coming. Yeah. So she wants to do She wants to do a regatta, uh, something like that as well. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, to live 70 years. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but 100, um, you know, I mean, you know, I, I think that things like this and you and you pay homage to people that made a difference within these communities and a lot of times um when i was on the show the other day um we spoke about sometimes we don't pay homage to 
heroes and persons that change the way that we live and how we, our Bamians are proud. Um, and, and this is one of the ways of doing that. And we'll continue to do that in different ways, whether it's through sailing, through local government, and, and naming roads and streets and things like that. Well, let's hope the Bahamians come out today. The opening ceremony is set for 6 o'clock this mm -hmm. evening. There's also a concert, so it's just like the best of the best. Yeah. Come on out, but it's more of a kid's atmosphere. Yeah. We have life and keep performing. You have Junior John Canoe winners performing. You have young singers Pop performing. Yeah, yeah, so it's, uh, it's going to be a nice, clean atmosphere. We, this is... Basically, a little smaller than the crowd that we see at the best of the best because there are other things to do. But I feel more persons are going to come out later on, and especially yeah. on the weekend, Friday and Saturday. Yeah. 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 It's going to be It'll nice. Be a great event for kids to come out here today. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you might get some kids that come out here and just get hooked on sailing and come mm -hmm. say, Laurie, how can I come? And I, my mommy can't drop me. My daddy can't <laughs> drop me. How can mm -hmm. I get? I don't have a boat. I don't have this. How would I need what? I already had one call me <laughs> up to say, how does my kid get involved in this? I'm like, well, do they know how to sail? No. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, come on down to the Montague and check it out and see, see what's happening. And, mm -hmm. and maybe we can get you out. We do have one of our instructors here. I think she's going to have a, um, a bigger boat in it, out, out here. I'm not sure if she's out there with it now. Um, but to take kids out sailing in, in, a, in a bigger boat. Maybe not today, but we'll see. But yeah. also to be on the beach to show them the boats that are there so that they can see what, what it's like. You have lots of youngsters. have close to 200 persons competing here this weekend. It's going to be an exciting weekend, so come on yeah. down. And some of these youngsters you might see in the Olympics in the next, not say four years no, no, or this I, year, I think, but I the think, next eight years. I think you're, I think you're looking for about 15 years. 15 years? Yeah, 10. Why 10, so maybe far? 10, maybe 10. A lot, of the, a lot of people in the Olympics in sailing tend to be um, mid-20s, okay. late-20s. Um, occasionally you have a couple of 18, 19-year-olds, so yes, a couple of them could be in the next squad. I mean, right now we have Joshua Higgins, who's uh, sailing internationally in the, in the Laser 7. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the equipment in the Olympics. Uh, he's trying to qualify the country. Sailing is uh, a hard sport to qualify in the Olympics. There's a bunch of classes, but the biggest class is the laser, and it has 36 slots. So only 36 countries can attend. There's 50 countries in Europe that have thousands of sailors, so that have been sailing, you know, since they were eight against hardcore sailors that they don't know all over Europe. So small island nations in the Caribbean are at a real disadvantage because we are isolated. It's hard to get to regattas. We don't have 500 people in New Providence sailing. Mm -hmm. You go to any big place in Europe and there's 500 kids right there. And then they get in their car and there's another 500 kids they've never met that they got to fight. So it's a, really, it's a really hard thing for Caribbean nations to get to the Olympics in sailing. And on that note, how can we get more kids involved in sailing from, from your perspective, bringing in more, especially kids that don't have the privilege to come out here? Yeah. I, I mean, I think this is, is a step in the right direction today. Um, you continue to get government funding to, to work along with nonprofits, and, you know, I think building a, a, a real facility um, that is, is just designated to develop the sport yeah. um, and where you you bring in international instructors that assist with the instructors we currently have um, and I give them the exposure um, I you know one thing I can say is that Bamians are, are resilient and you can see through the buddy heels and uh, the Andre Aitens that that we have talent in different sports um, and eventually we'll, we'll get there we've been there before um, so we just have to find a niche and how to make it happen and, and just work towards that yeah, and, and there really needs to be a, a dedicated site. The Bahamas National Sailing School right now is w running out of the Nassau Yacht Club. Right. And we are at the, at the courtesy, and the, we really appreciate the Nassau Yacht Club for allowing us to use their facilities. But that is limiting our growth. We, we really cannot get any bigger than we are on the footprint of the Nassau Yacht Club. So we're working on that. So the architects at the Ministry of Works are developing a plan good news that um so the rendering should be finished shortly then we'll share them with uh laurie and and for their input and then you know because the people the stakeholders would know what they really want and how they want it to look so um we have some preliminaries um and hopefully in short order we'll be able to work together designate a site 
um, get government support to build the facility. Really looking forward to that. No, Absolutely. Because that, head will, that, is when, that is when we will start to go exponential. Yeah, because the hit will be sailing as a national sport, but we're not having anybody go to the Olympic track and say, why well, are you not the national sport? We have people in the Olympic yeah. swimming. So you, sailing got to put their, so to speak, <laughs> yeah, put their sails yeah, up. Yeah, got to get there. Oh. Yeah. So it's a lot of pressure on you, Minister. Uh, yeah, that's, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of pressure. That's okay. You, it here first. you look like you can handle it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you know, we've, we've done a lot in the last two years in regards to developing the sport. And, you know, you build upon legacies, right? So governments are continuous, you know. So once you, you build what we have and um, the next, you know, as we continue to move, that governments continue to build upon because... You know, this isn't political fuss. It's everybody wants to enjoy the sport, um, and it's a, it's something that all of us on all parts uh, politically enjoy. I know. I'm sitting right here, and I'm just imagine me being one of your ministers, just looking at you, say, I wish I was Sweden's place right now. He's out on the <laughs> Monaco Bay enjoying the dock, talking you. about good things while I'm here stressing out over this and that. Well, you must, well, must I, be happy where you're yeah, at. Well, I've been, to, I've been to work from early, so I've been to work from, from after to seven and, uh -huh. and and then I made sure I got some work out of the way so I could come out here and yeah. hang out a bit. Yeah. <laughs> pleasure. We would like for you to stay around. I know you normally go around just yeah. healing yeah. and making sure, but you, you have a busy schedule. They would like to thank you for joining us thank you. here on the broadcast. And a great job by you and your crew, not only for this junior regatta, yeah. but for regattas in the whole. Um, as, from a broadcasting perspective, I've seen a whole different pleasure, a whole different taste a whole different, just about everything since you guys yeah. have, have started to do things with the national Thank you. Sport. Appreciate that. All right. Continue the good work. Thank you, man. Now the sailors can be, they can be as rough and, uh, and rowdy as possible, well, but you, you know how to handle it. Well, I, I won them too, so. <laughs> and, and good luck in Georgetown. I, uh, I don't know who I'm pulling for this year. Uh, well, I, yeah. I, I don't want to say it, but. Oh, don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot, Minister right. Clay. Sweet Thank for you. joining us here on the broadcast. Thank I know you have a very busy schedule. You're going to rock around and some yeah. good food and everything is out here. Yeah. And this one is for the kids. Yeah, no doubt. No this, doubt. This one today and tomorrow and Saturday. It's down here for the kids. The stage is set up for the concert. Uh -huh. The kids' playground is already being occupied. And that's what brings smiles on your faces when you see the kids yeah. are enjoying themselves in a nice, clean atmosphere. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So so the race is, the race is over. So It looks like they're getting ready to start another one. So they're getting ready to start another one. But before we do that, can we take a break and be... Right back, and we'd like to thank Minister Clay Sweeting. He's a busy Thank man. You. Thanks a lot for joining Thank us you. here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah, good to see you, man. Right. Thank yeah. you. We're going to take a break and be right back here at the Monarchy Show. Oh, yeah. A new year brings a new lineup. ZNS is bringing you what you want to watch, so don't blink. What's Trending Lifestyles in the Afternoon starts out the daily programming at 4 p.m. This is followed by Unleashed at 5 p.m., a show that dives headfirst into all topics ranging from headline grabbers to current events. At 6 p.m., Grand Bahamas, The Bunk Spot, graces the airwaves, a review of Grand Bahamas recovery. 6.30 p.m. brings the news from Grand Bahama, and 7 p.m. brings The Big Show, the new Bahamas Tonight, followed by a continuation of News with the Bahamas Tonight access now at 7.30 p.m. News with a new twist. Surprise, surprise, at 8 p.m., The Rundown, nightly news analysis for all of the big stories of the day. And wrapping things up at 11 p.m. is The Bahamas Tonight, bringing you fresh news. Only the sun covers the Bahamas better than ZNX. Immediate response when to New York, Houston, then to Atlanta to locate, celebrate, and feature outstanding Bahamians making waves throughout the USA. Monday, February 26th, and Tuesday, February 27th, Immediate response broadcasts live from the Bahamas Consulate in London.
Join the ZNS radio and television network as we interview Bahamian movers and shakers in and around Great Britain as the media response continues spanning the globe, identifying standout Bahamians, making marks internationally. For more information on how you can place your TV or radio commercials or be a part of the media response global series, call 502-3800 or email phoenixinstitute at gmail.com. Sponsored by Fidelity Bank Bahamas Limited, the Royal Bahamas Police Force, the Ministry of Tourism, Checkers Cafe, the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources, Bahamas Retina and Eye Care Services, Bahamas Harvest Church, the Bahamas Development Bank, Battery and Tire Specialists, AFD Management, Tiki Bikini Hut, the Financial Intelligence Unit, Javon Medical Center, Cafe Channing Noel, and by Art Development. I'm here at the Dixon Hill Lighthouse on San Salvador to let you know that marine protected areas make dollars and cents. A well-designed and managed network of protected areas can generate income for nearby communities. From MPA managers to lodges to eco tours, there is money to be made. Healthy marine ecosystems help to protect our islands from climate change and other impacts that we cannot control. Healthy coral reefs help to break down big waves and mangroves absorb storm surge and help to protect our coastline. Older and larger fish tend to carry more and healthier eggs than younger fish. Fish replenishment areas will allow fish to grow bigger and ensure that we have more fish now and in the future. In our replenishment area, fish are free to grow and reproduce. As their populations increase, more fish will spill over into other areas where fishermen can increase their catch and their income. I support the establishment of a marine protected area on my island. I support the establishment of marine protected areas on my island. I support the establishment of marine protected areas on my island. I support the establishment of a marine protected area on my island, and you should too. And you should too. And you should too. And you should too. See the future with Bahamas Protected. protected. Everybody, we're back here at the Monarchy Foreshore. Charles Fisher along with Laurie Lowe. And Laurie, the race just finished just now, but they're taking a short break just like we did just now. And yep. they're back on the water. I thought they were coming in to get some interviews, but they're going to race back to back. And you're saying this race should be shorter. Why? Uh, because they, they shortened the course, so they moved the marks in a little closer to shore. Uh, they're trying to make sure that we, um, we, we, we catch up because we're a little, a little slow. They had to do a general recall in the last race. Uh, hopefully they won't have to do that in this race. This is the um, the problem with sailboat racing is, is it takes a little longer to do. Oh, so you heard the horn. So I hear, I hear it now. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think they've moved their boat a little closer to us as well. And take a look. They've got a mark right here off the breakwater. So it should be a lot of fun, a little bit more close close to shore, so we'll be able to see a little bit better. And... Um, yeah, so that's the problem with sailboat racing. When you have a recall, and you can have a lot of recalls sometimes, uh, you have to start five minutes again. You know, you, you have a recall in, in swimming, I think the second one, and, and you're, you're out. So yeah, the five. Yeah, you're, you're, and, and it doesn't take long to restart. It's another, you know, 30 seconds. So the optimist still on the water, Lambert. McKinney won the race just now out of Eleuthera. Let's see if he can go for the double and then be in a good position heading into tomorrow and Saturday. Yeah. So how would you do it? I, on the best, the best, only the best sales on the last day. How are we doing it here? No, I think I think we're going to do the, the standard, which is basically, and the Sir Derwood Knowles uh, trophy for the E-Class is the same. So we've got, hopefully we will have six races. Mm -hmm. If we get six races, um, each competitor will be able to drop their worst race. Okay. 
Uh, this is something that exists in sailboat racing, kind of because sometimes you get a boat that breaks, so it, it helps. It helps with that, or because of the disqualification issues. Uh, so it's a little bit more um, allows for a little bit more errors than some other sports, right? You, if you get a DSQ in a swim meet, you're gone. But in a sailboat race, you're DSQ in that race, but not necessarily in the whole event. We're looking at the conditions that, that is out there. Mm -hmm. At this time of the day, it's 12, 10 in the afternoon. Is it OK? It's That's, perfect. Yeah. It's perfect conditions. Perfect conditions. We see that, that this is the five minute start that they're on before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, and they're really close in the shore. Yeah, they got the, they can do it. They can handle it. And here you see furthest left is Mary Jack Nash. I believe she did finish second in the race. I'm this is much better. I can see the numbers from here. I th I'm <laughs> thinking they're really too close in the shore. No, it's perfect. They, so the green fleet, yes, maybe it might be a little close. But for the, for the championship fleet, I think we're good. Looking for my, I'm looking for my uh, cheat sheet. So, so this, seven nine nine. I don't, I don't have that number. So oh, this is the four number. minute start before the race, like you're, you were indicating earlier. Yeah, they're in the four minute sequence. You can tell because there's a flag on the main committee boat that is a blue square w around a white square. Ah, uh, so the sail, the kid with the pink sail numbers. That's a Long Island one. And the only reason I can tell you that is because he's got a decal on his sail that's the leftover from the Bahamas games. But I'm not sure which kid he is from Long Island because I did not get all their numbers correctly. They are right on shore where the sailing fans can really get a first close eye view of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And we've got quite a few kids from Exuma in this race. Uh, there's a kid from Exuma sitting the furthest out on the left. I think his name is Donovan Wood. No, sorry, that's Emmett Knowles. So his great-grandfather, oh, they started. And I think that was an individual. So the flag you see on the race committee boat, that's the white flag with the blue blue cross on it is an indication that somebody was over and it looks like certainly Mary Jack Nash has come back so they do an individual recall when they're um, sure they know which boats are over they do a general when there's too many to figure out who's over <laughs> so they're going out now to the first mark yep mm-hmm and they all wanted this pin in it's a it's a big cluster down the big at the pin in I guess that, that would mean that the wind was uh, a little shifty. Mm -hmm. Now we can see movement. Mm -hmm. Good view of talking there. I like how they move from side to side on the boat uh -huh. so, so, so quick. Mm -hmm. They're very agile. They jump from one side to the next side when they're turning very, very quick. Mm -hmm. Beautiful day for sailing. Glad to be out of the office and out here sitting on the dock of the bay, enjoying this cool breeze and watching the top junior sailors here in the country. Some of them, the top junior sailors in the world. Yeah. And it looks like Finley McKinney Lambert is taking the lead again. Uh... After winning the first race, he should know the course very well and where he wants to go. But you said they've brought in the course a bit. That first race felt like it took more than 20 minutes. Yeah, I think it did. I think that um, the race committee, the, the wind dropped out a little bit for them. It was not as quite as windy, so they set the course a little farther than it needed to be. So now they have brought it back in a little bit. And uh, I think this race is going to be a lot shorter. Of course, the last race, too, we had a general recall, so that added another five or eight minutes to the, to the program. So when we're finished with this Optimus class, we go into what division after that? Uh, after this, we'll start uh, the lasers and the sunfish will be on the course at the, the same time. Uh, okay, and how and many break? Uh, is there a break? Uh, not these much skippers from this class will sail on those, right? None of these, none of these kids will sail on that class, okay. no. 
Generally, when we have an event like this, the course, the kids are all sailing at the same time in all the classes in different race courses. Mm -hmm. For this event, we decided to have them all on the same race course so they could all be seen from shore. And so they can't all be on the race course at the same time. Yeah. So, they, so normally in our events, it's not possible for them all to sail together. I mean, in sorry, it's not possible for a uh, sailor to sail in more than one class. So number 317? 317, 317, I think that's a Grand Bahama boat, uh, but I'm not sure, and I don't have that. Ah, 317. That's Chase Thompson. Yes, he's from Grand Bahama, and he's 13. 13. And again, the pink sails, if you see a pink sail number, that's a Long Island boat. And they also have the right, the, the little decal, the big round circle on the lower left of the sail. Number 12. Oh, I don't know. Who's number 12? Number 12 is Blake Morey. He's from New Providence. And 690 is Will Wyland Brainin from Exuma Sailing Club. They're looking pretty good. Back to the overhead mm -hmm. shot. A back to the overhead shot. Yeah. You see the nice now you can see them all yeah. spread out there. Very spread out. We saw this at the beginning of the last race, and then it was like a one straight line. There's number 180 again, and out there. And 180 is John Hartley. He's the uh, from the sailing club, and his father is the current British High Commissioner to the Bahamas. I believe he just started sailing last year, so oh. so you can see the progression. He, he, he came in, just got connected with Regatta. Mm -hmm. And we have a few uh, girls in this in this uh, event, including Yamaya Halber and Michaela Halber from Eleuthera. Um, Yamaya's 12 years, uh, they're twins, actually. <laughs> so they're both 12. And Yamaya's in uh, number tw 117, and Makayla is in 119. Seeing they're still trying to make out the numbers. I think that's number two, or number that, 12. That is number two. Number two. Oh. 12. Number 12, yeah, that's Blake Morey. He's out of the sailing club. Blake Morey. Yep. That was one of yours? Uh, he's, no, he's out of the Royal Nassau Sailing Club. See that? That's what I like to see. You like that, yeah. <laughs> I like to see yeah. the agility moving from side to side. Yeah. And what is that all about? Just trying to shift with the wind? Well, so you're tacking, so you're moving to the other side of the boat because you're, 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 mm, you're putting the sail on the different side of the boat, so you're, you need to get on the other side. And some of them um, do it pretty abruptly, and they're trying to get a little bit of a, a, an oomph a little bit of a, a burst of speed when they do that. And they think it's cool. <laughs> and it is, it does look cool. I, I, I love seeing that. Uh, some of them come around the first marker. Uh -huh. Are we seeing that straight it's line? much closer. Yeah. Much closer this race. Oh, you can see the markers are really close in this one. Uh, and it looks like, I can't, I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure who the first people are. Like you say, it's a very closer race than the first series and, race. And yeah, and 176 is Donovan Wood. He's from Eleuthera Sailing Academy. 699 is Tyrese McKenzie from Exuma Sailing Club. 117. And 117 is, uh, I think that's Michaela, no, that's Jemaya from Eleuthera Sailing Academy. Tight racing. I just love the color of the water. Mm. And I, I feel that Exuma has some of the better water in the Bahamas, but out here is Monarchy right now. It's giving them a great competition. The color, the color is right there. Good sailing. It's good sailing. See, seven, boat number eight. 17 is Rudolph Ferguson, Rudy Ferguson. He's from... Uh, Nassau, and he goes to St. Augustine's, I think. Mm -hmm. 
Rudy's been sailing about three years. He's a junior instructor, assistant junior instructor with the Bahamas National Sailing School. I've only been sailing for three years? About three years, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we see them punch up there. Yeah, it's good. It's good. They got a fight. They're, they're close. You see another big boat, the committee boat on the outside there. Try oh, that blue it. boat, that's a, that's a press boat. Press boat? Yeah, that's a press boat. They're, get, they're helping us get all this great footage. Okay. Thank you very much to the press. That's 112. Yeah, 112. Uh, who's 112? 112 is Taryn. So Taryn is the younger sister of, of Finley. And there's a couple of our um, kids in the back. They, 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 uh, somebody made a mistake. <laughs> so somebody fouled somebody else. So we have a lot of They're not supposed siblings to have sailing against one another in these races. Sometimes, brothers, yeah. Sisters, mm -hmm. sisters, mm -hmm. brothers, brothers. Yep. Yep. That is nice to keep yeah, it going. It's nice. Right now, Finley. 690 is Wiley Brain, and he's from Exuma Sailing Club. I think he's pretty, it's probably his first time in the championship fleet, so good for him. So with the championship and the regatta, anybody can come, or do you have to be qualified to come here or, or invited? How does it work? Um, so generally speaking, um, the kids are members of a, of a club or members of the sailing association. Um, you really have to, we really need to know that you know how to sail. Right, so um, uh, a lot of these boats were providing, a lot of these children were providing the boats to them. So we do not provide a boat to a kid that we don't think is going to be able to sail. And generally speaking, whether they go into the championship fleet now, that's uh, one one, one twelve. I think that's again that's one one two. One one two. That's Taryn McKinney Lambert. Yep. So she's a very good young sailor. Uh, not quite as good as her brother, but her brother's a little older, so, so. But she's a very good sailor. And uh, so the coaches tell us whether they are, their kids are Green Fleet or Championship Fleet. This is still the Optimus class, yes. This is still the Optimus the class. class. They're showing you laser class on the screen, but it's, it's, these are the Optimus. The lasers are starting to come out, mm -hmm. as are the uh, Sunfish. Optimus sailing back-to-back -back races here in Montague. So yeah, the coaches decide whether the kids are Green Fleet, and and the the Green Fleet, uh, if they win the Green Fleet, they are not allowed to stay on the Green Fleet again. They got to move up to the championship. Uh -huh. Race number two here in the Optimus class. You can see it from the or Eastern end. So you can see Montague in the back, the Montague for sure in the background, not far out. Oh, that's great. No, it would keep you around so long, because some people might say, man, I already had my time, time for me to give up. So, again, it's back to, sailing has done a lot for me. I've, I've gone all over the world sailing, met a lot of great people. I really enjoy it. I still enjoy it. Um, I enjoy the heavy air for the excitement. I enjoy the light air because it's relaxing. Uh, and I want to pass that on to other kids because I just think it's, I think it's the greatest sport out there. And you know, even if you're not a competitor sailor, it's still a lifestyle. Uh, we have kids that don't like racing, that's fine. We, we had a kid that, uh, we used to do a regatta in Abaco. That was a combi adult kid event in Sunfish, and the adults were sailing Sunfish, and, the, and some of the kids as well. And then we had kids sailing Opties. And we had this great kid come from Nassau, and he really didn't like racing, but he liked to be out on the boat. Really? So he came to the event, and the second day, he, he threw a fishing line out. While he was What's racing, while he was racing, in the race, he threw a fishing line out, and would you believe it? He caught a jack, uh, and he was so proud. He brought that jack in the boat, and he carried that jack home to mom. <laughs> so you know, that's, that's <laughs> so it's not, it's not, you know, not everybody wants to race, but but 
once you learn how to control that boat, you learn how to control. In learning how to control that boat, you learn how to control yourself. One twelve, still a dentist, the sister. And uh, it's free, and you get away from call, people. Call it up, I remember a name, Donnie Martinborough. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. Whatever. Uh, Donnie still sells. Um, no. In fact, Donnie and uh, and a group of us when really. When I first got into business, he was he was one of the top sales. Yeah. Back then. He's a three-time world champion in the sunfish class. Mm. Uh, he's still sailing. Um, like me, he's a little long on the tooth for world championships, unless they, unless they, we sail in the Masters ones. Mm -hmm. um, we had a team that went to the Sunfish Worlds in December, and yeah, I, I said, uh, I nicknamed us the geriatric team because mm -hmm. um, the youngest, youngest one of us was 55. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a lot of fun. But with sailing, it doesn't matter your age, because I see McKinney, mm -hmm. who I did a story with last week, he's getting ready to sail from Exuma to Nassau, and he's yep. 70. Yep. So it doesn't yep. matter how old you are sailing. Mm -hmm. This is this is a sport you can say, you can do for life. You know you can't play you can't play rugby. You can't play American football for life. You can you can sail for life. It's a great it's a great sport. And that looks like one of the uh, Eleuther kids. One one nine. Uh, yeah, I think that's Michaela. Harbor Island. Harbor. Uh, no, she's from uh, Luther Sailing Academy. So that's uh, um, they're in Savannah Sound. 119 and 117. Those are the sister, those are the twins. Let me just check that, make sure I have that correctly. Yep, 117 and 119. They're two twins and they're right next to each other on the race course. Isn't that fantastic? So, that's, so they're using strategy on, on, on the rest of the season. Oh, no, no, no. They're looking to beat each other. Mm. <laughs> they're worried about the restless, restless sailors. They, they want to beat each other, I'm sure. It's funny, you know, you go all over the world and the people you care about beating are your own teammates. Because yeah. you got that, that, that pecking order back at home. So how many events can a young sailor go to for the year? Because uh, you so, mentioned a lot of international events besides the local regattas. So we have a lot of local regattas. Um, we probably have a, at least one regatta a month. Uh, in fact, right now we're, it's very busy. We had... Um, a regatta two weeks ago, and we have another regatta next week. Um, this is the busy time of year for us. Uh, so, but over the course, and then we have some, reg and these are multi-class regattas. We also have like a laser only junior nationals, an opti only junior nationals, um, sunfish only junior senior nationals. So there's a lot of events here, but there's, you know, you could pick any event you want to go to internationally. There's an, there's an event somewhere if you want to. Um, most of our kids tend to, to, to stick to Florida because that's easier and closer and, and therefore cheaper. Um, they, they also do an event in Cork in Canada, which is a nice big regatta uh, and in the summer. And then they are looking at going to, in the Optimist class, the North Americans, and the worlds in the laser class they have done a couple of midwinter regattas in florida that they can go to there's any number so yeah theoretically you could race every weekend internationally if you had the time inclination and money um but really you, you want to pick your regattas is it good to most. be is it good to be sailing every weekend no, I think eh, I think you get burnt out, right? You know, you you want to you want to. I for me, I want to make sure the kids are having fun. As long as you're having fun, let's keep racing. But if you're not having fun, you know, and 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 if you're doing it every weekend, you know, you it's going to interfere with your schooling. Um, so you 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 don't really want to be doing it every weekend, no. Now we see that same line that we saw in the first race where everybody's now starting to separate themselves. Oh, that one, that one healed a little bit too far, got a little bit of water in the boat, and now they're having to bail. Oh, so, yeah, I've seen him bail it out. Yeah. I so, saw he dip. Yeah, so you, they're, they're trying to get the boat healed over on top of them, and what that does is it less less surface, so less friction, so the boat moves better. It's, it's minor, but it makes a difference. Uh, it makes a difference over the course of the leg. But it's a, it's a fine line between 
having it healed over far enough. But it's not easy. Not <laughs> say, easy. Not to, easy. To, uh, from my perspective, it's not easy to be on a boat with a camera on your shoulder while the boat is rocking Absolutely. and trying to hold a, a steady shot all the and, time. And, and, of course, they're far enough away that they're having to zoom, so that makes it even harder. Yeah. But uh, you, you see, in, in other sports, they talk about core strength. Sailors have a lot of core strength because they're all, see, you see how they're having to balance that boat? Yeah. That's all stomach muscles. So besides sailing, what else do they do to stay in shape, uh, to get ray sharp? It's right yesterday, sailing. So when you get to the upper levels, they're going to the gym, uh, lifting weights, doing, doing strength exercises, and they're also doing aerobic, aerobic exercises, whether that's running or cycling. Uh, Joshua, when Joshua Higgins came back from his first stint away where he's at a training camp, uh, I said, so what was the thing you learned the most? He said, oh, Miss Lori, when I first went there, I couldn't believe they went to the gym and sailed in the same day. I did the running. Now I go to the gym, I go sailing, and I come back off the water, and I ride my bike for 10 miles. So the, He's the, realizing the other things that is important for him to be a great sailor. Yeah. Had a chance to interview. I think he was in Australia when I interviewed him a few months ago. Mm -hmm. That's a nice. That's a nice one right there. Yeah. Coming around the marker. This is uh, this is Finley McKinney, and I think he's coming. Are they finishing or are they well, carrying on? 190. Yeah. 190. 190 is. Let me tell you who that is. I got to pull up my crib sheet. That's an Exuma Sailing Club sailor. That's Dallas Clark. And number five is, ooh, number five. My guess is number five must be a, a Long Island sailor. We had some um, sail changes for them at the last minute, so I don't have See that correct information. Some of the boats now are starting to come in. Looking in the background, the crowd now is starting to come. People are taking their lunchtime and coming on, coming down here to Montague to enjoy the festivities, get some good food. And it looks like the winners of that race were was Finley McKinney. So he has two in the bag. From Eleuthera, and in second, Emmett Knowles from Exuma Sailing Club. Trained by Dallas? Uh, Dallas is his father. <laughs> <laughs> and his great-grandfather is Percy Knowles, the yeah. guy who crewed for Sir Derwin. Yeah. And Percy was Sir Derwin's brother. So Percy was one of Sir Derwood's crew. Seeing the Knowles tradition carry on here, and this Sir Derwood Knowles, here we go. The sun is out, but it's still of a bit of a chill on the water. <laughs> we got air conditioning out here. I know you're cold. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got my jacket on. I was on. trying to look island-like, but I'm starting <laughs> to feel the cool breeze. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have another jacket for you. Yeah. <laughs> when I take a break, I have a jacket there in the car, I'll take, put it on. But I'm enjoying it. It's better than being in the office yeah. with that air conditioning. Yeah. It's a nice, cool breeze. Yeah. We could move you back so you're in the sun. Done, yeah. Wow, Once you pretty, get in the sun, I think you'll be good. What a beautiful yeah. shot there. We're uh -huh. getting to see most of the boats as they come in. Yeah, you're right, it didn't. You're, you're right. You're right on point. It didn't take much longer for this race. No. You see the laser class boats now starting to make their way over, so they are ready to go. And look like they are going back to the Yacht Club. Yeah, the, the Optimist Championship fleet are going back to the Yacht Club. Uh, they're going to put their boats away for the day, and then they'll come over to the Montague, and maybe we can get a, a couple of them out here yeah. to, to have a little interview. The laser class, they are already looking to be on the line. Look like they're going, unlike the big regardless where you have like a two, three hour wait before, or the tide rise, or this ride. Tide rise doesn't figure into this, right? Well, you know, the, the beautiful thing about children and, uh, and international classes is when we say the start time shall be, the start time shall be. But uh, in this particular case, we were given a m limited number of hours in which to get our international classes in. So they all want to race, they all want to sail, they're not going to mess around. Coming up in this lazy class, how many sloops do we have in here? So I think we have about uh, 15 lasers and 15 sunfish. Something about that. Laser and sunfish yeah, will laser be sailing sunfish. together. The Optimists, they are heading in. 
take a break and be right back over here to watch some of the action. And then coming up later on, we'll have the E-Class. That's what I'm looking forward to seeing these youngsters maneuver. So they'll have at least two persons on those boats for the E-Class. At least two two persons, yeah. I think the the list of competitors I saw indicated two in each boat, but I think if, if this is still as windy as this when they are sailing, they might put three in some of the boats. They'll have to set a new course right now for the... Yeah, they might, they might take the mark out a little longer, but they might see how, how quick it goes and, and see what happens. Come on down to the Monarchy for sure. This is doing those sailing junior regatta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is exciting out here today. The breeze has picked up slightly from this morning. The sun is out, but it's still breezy, a little chill. So if you're coming on down, you can still bring that sweater or jacket. I uh, don't recommend those short pants and slippers for the tourists. They are out here today just enjoying this. Where some of them come from, well, it is just snow on the ground, so they're enjoying the atmosphere out here today. And we're definitely enjoy bringing you the best in junior sailors, the laser and the sunfish class coming up next. We saw the Optimus race, back to back race, and what a show they put on. We also have the police boat out there monitoring the situation, the safety boat, the press boat. Everybody's out there making sure that everything goes smooth sailing. So, Laurie, let's take a break before the laser start, and we'll be right back here to the Monarchy Four Shore. This is it Knows Junior Sailing Championships. Fantastic. Thank you. A new year brings a new lineup. ZNS is bringing you what you want to watch, so don't blink. What's Trending Lifestyles in the Afternoon starts out the daily programming at 4 p.m. This is followed by Unleashed at 5 p.m., a show that dives headfirst into all topics ranging from headline grabbers to current events. At 6 p.m., Grand Bahamas, The Bounce Spot, graces the airwaves, a review of Grand Bahamas recovery. 6.30 p.m. brings the news from Grand Bahama, and 7 p.m. brings The Big Show, the new Bahamas Tonight, followed by a continuation of News with the Bahamas Tonight, access now at 7.30 p.m. News with a new twist. Surprise, surprise, at 8 p.m., The Rundown, nightly news analysis for all of the big stories of the day. And wrapping things up at 11 p.m. is The Bahamas Tonight, bringing you fresh news. Only the sun covers the Bahamas better than ZNX. Colon cancer is the third most common cancer affecting Bahamians. Your risk of developing colon cancer is increased if you have a personal history of colorectal cancer, or colon polyps, a family history of colon cancer, or inflammatory bowel diseases such as ulcerative colitis. Other factors that can increase your risk of developing colon cancer are low fiber, high fat diets, a sedentary lifestyle, obesity, smoking, and alcohol. You can take steps to reduce your risk of colon cancer by making specific lifestyle changes. Eat a variety of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. These foods contain fiber, minerals, vitamins, and antioxidants, which may play a role in cancer prevention. Drink alcohol in moderation or not at all. Do not smoke. Exercise with a goal of getting in at least 30 minutes each day. If you've been inactive, start slowly and gradually build up to 30 minutes. Also, talk to your doctor before starting any exercise program. Maintain a healthy weight. If you're at a healthy weight, maintain it by combining a well-balanced diet with daily exercise. If you need to lose weight, ask your doctor about healthy ways to achieve your goal. Colon cancer screening can also help to prevent colon cancer or lead to its early detection when treatment is most effective. If you're 45 years or older, speak to your doctor about having a colonoscopy or some form of colon cancer screening that may be appropriate for you. I'm Dr. Eugene Marcus Cooper. Pay attention to your health. Get the facts and discuss colon cancer with your physician today. 
This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health in partnership with the Public Hospitals Authority. Immediate response went to New York, Houston, then to Atlanta to locate, celebrate, and feature outstanding Bahamians making waves throughout the USA. Monday, February 26th, and Tuesday, February 27th, Immediate Response broadcasts live from the Bahamas Consulate in London. Join the ZNS radio and television network as we interview Bahamian movers and shakers in and around Great Britain as Immediate Response continues spanning the globe, identifying standout Bahamians, making marks internationally. For more information on how you can place your TV or radio commercials or be a part of the Immediate Response Global Series, call 502-3800 or email phoenixinstitute at gmail.com. Sponsored by Fidelity Bank Bahamas Limited, the Royal Bahamas Police Force, the Ministry of Tourism, Checkers Cafe, the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources, Bahamas Retina and Eye Care Services, Bahamas Harvest Church, the Bahamas Development Bank, Battery and Tire Specialists, AFD Management, Tiki Bikini Hut, the Financial Intelligence Unit, Javon Medical Center, Cafe Channing Noel, and by Art Development. Did you know that if a fire starts in your home, you may have as little as two minutes to escape? Keep your family and home safe with these few fire safety preparation and prevention tips. Ensure that your home has brick and smoke detectors. They will alert you if there is smoke and fire in your home. Install a smoke detector on every level of your home, inside each bedroom and outside each sleeping area. Test smoke detectors every month and change the batteries every six months. Home fires can spread rapidly and every second counts. Create an escape plan and practice it with everyone in your home. Make sure everyone can safely escape in less than two minutes. Keep escape routes as clutter-free as possible so no one trips or fall on the way out during an emergency. In addition to smoke detectors, fire extinguishers is an important device to have on hand. To use a fire extinguisher, remember the acronym PASS. Pull the pin. Aim the nozzle, squeeze the handle, and sweep from side to side at the base of the fire. We must all do our parts to ensure that our families and homes are safe in the event a fire occurs. On behalf of the Commissioner of Police, the Director of Fire Services, and all officers of the Fire Department, let's work together to help prevent fires, because fire safety is everyone's responsibility, and the life you save may be your own. Dixon Hill Lighthouse on San Salvador to let you know that marine protected areas make dollars and cents. A well-designed and managed network of protected areas can generate income for nearby communities. From MPA managers to lodges to eco tours, there is money to be made. Healthy marine ecosystems help to protect our islands from climate change and other impacts that we cannot control. Healthy coral reefs help to break down big waves and mangroves absorb storm surge and help to protect our coastline. Older and larger fish tend to carry more and healthier eggs than younger fish. Fish replenishment areas will allow fish to grow bigger and ensure that we have more fish now and in the future. In our replenishment area, fish are free to grow and reproduce. As their populations increase, more fish will spill over into other areas where fishermen can increase their catch and their income. I support the establishment of a marine protected area on my island. Colon cancer is the third most common cancer affecting Bahamians. Your risk of developing colon cancer is increased if you have a personal history of colorectal cancer or colon polyps, a family history of colon cancer, or inflammatory bowel diseases such as ulcerative colitis. Other factors that can increase your risk of developing colon cancer are low fiber, high fat diets, a sedentary lifestyle, obesity, smoking, and alcohol. You can take steps to reduce your risk of colon cancer.
afternoon. We're back here at the Monarchy Foreshore. So gracious that Laurie Lowe has decided to stay with us. She's comfortable here on the show. But also joining us now is Robert Dunkley. And you were out there earlier this morning? I was. How's the conditions out there? Absolutely perfect. It was excellent conditions. Mm -hmm. And I think everything's remained the same. Mm -hmm. So I think we're in for a very good race coming up. Laurie and I saw some race call back. What was going out there earlier? What was happening? Well, there was a general recall mm -hmm. on the first start that they had. And if you have a number of boats over, hard to identify who they are. They'll have a general recall and they restart. Mm -hmm. But the conditions and sailing and everything, no penalties or nothing to do. From what I saw out there, there <laughs> didn't seem to be any penalties. Mm -hmm. And so now we're getting set for the laser and the sunfish, or what is competing in that? Oh, we got a bunch of kids. Uh, so Robert has a bunch of kids from the from the sailing club. We have a, so I guess our top, I'll start with our top sailor, uh, Joshua Weish. He's sailing in the laser. Uh, he's hoping to represent the country at a world championship this, this year, but actually next weekend we're having a, a qualifying event for them to decide who will represent the Bahamas in the, um, in the worlds, in the youth worlds. Uh, we have uh, Rico Major, who sails out of St. Augustine. Um, well, he sails from the BNSS, but he's from St. Augustine. We got Delano Davis, who's also a BNSS sailor. Um, Johannes Moritz, Craig Ferguson. Craig Ferguson is one of our top junior sailors. Uh, he's won a Sunfish Juniors. He won a couple of Optimus Juniors. Uh, we've got Eliza Denning uh, out of Lifer Key. She's one of our top junior sailors. She just moved out of the Opti uh, into the laser. Uh, she did, actually, she attended an event in Florida in the last month and she was a top girl. That was her first major international event in the laser. Uh, we got Zach Knowles and Aiden Bain. Uh, Aiden Bain and Ellie Gibson are from Grand Bahama. Uh, we got Enzo Godoy, who sails out of the sailing club. Uh, Sienna Jones, who's from Lifer Key. Uh, Eliane Higgs, she's from the sailing club. I don't think she's sailing today. I think she has school, unfortunately, that she couldn't get out of. Uh, Katie Kelly, I think, is in the same uh, situation as Ellie. And then we have Norman Cartwright and Jerron Francis. Uh, Norman is also one of our top junior sailors. Uh, he recently attended with Enzo Godoy the Sunfit, sorry, the Snipe Youth Worlds in Miami in December. And they did pretty good for the time that they've spent in the boat. Jerron Francis, he's, um, he's a good sailor. He's also a great uh, horn player. And he's a, he's a man of many talents. So we're hoping to see how they all do out there. I think it'll be a great event. Do we expect some really stiff competition in this, in this division, in this class? I let Robert speak to that. Well, you're looking at some of our top sailors in the laser class. And I'll, I'll just comment on uh, Joshua Weech, who uh, has been winning a lot of the events this, this past year. OK, and uh, very close to him is Norman Cartwright who really got an award as the most improved sailor at Royal Nassau Sailing Club and also our Sailor of the Year. Um, unfortunately, Ellie Higgs isn't here today, but she should be here tomorrow. Another star in it, it, just coming into the laser class, Eliza Danning. And uh, Lori mentioned she was the, the top girl at a major event in Florida a month ago. She also placed second out of 62 competitors in that same event. We also have an, another uh, sailor, female, Sienna Jones, who's just gotten into the class. And she is r right there with Eliza and uh, doing extremely well. So this is really one of the first events these girls are going to be sailing here with our own local group in the lasers. So we're, we're looking for good results from them. Laurie? And it looks like they're about to start. Uh, they're within one minute. The flags are telling me that. 
And so I would think we got about 20 seconds till the start. For our viewing audience who doesn't know much about the Lays and the Surface, give us some of the dimensions and like we did with the Optimus. Dimensions. Sure. Were the lasers the boat's about 15 feet long? It's very light. It's about 120, 125 pounds. It's a very exciting boat, very tricky boat to, uh, to sail. You really need to be in top shape. And it's one of the things that we work on in our programs is to get these kids fit enough to really sail these boats competitively. There we go. That's, that's the start. That's mm -hmm. the start, Horn. And I think somebody was over. At least some, yep. I think that might be Johannes Moritz who was over. That is Johannes who was over early. Unfortunately, he was right at the pin, so he only had to go around it, and he's all good to go now. And then we have one that's a straggler who didn't quite make the start. They got a bit to catch up, but that's not a death knell. Out of the lead right now and in control of the fleet is Eliza. The She's the one in the farthest left. They all seem to think that the breeze has gone to the left because they're all on the same tack. Oh, somebody's come back, but I think that they, the one that tacked, they tacked because they were getting dirty air and they were looking for free air. Uh, maybe there has been a shift because people are coming back. In the meantime, the sunfish are out there getting lined up to start. So they'll start right after them and race on the sea? Uh, they're starting effectively five minutes after. Okay. So I think the top fleet, sorry, the lasers will be around the top mark about the time the sunfish start. And we have a pretty uh, broad group of kids in this so boat. What I would like to know, why is the sunfish sails prettier? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, if, we, if we saw the optimist with the white seals, yeah. the laser with the white seals, with the sunfish, they are pretty. They are pretty. <laughs> so, so the sunfish has been around a lot longer than the laser, and it did start as a boat that was used quite often in the Caribbean um, at hotels. And they liked the colorful sails. They liked to use the sails for events. So if we had a sail here, Actually, we had a Worlds here about six years ago, eight years ago, and the yellow and blue Bahamian color sails are from that event. There's a couple of red and blue sails there, and they probably came from a Worlds in America. So it's, it's, it's nice because it helps you identify boats better, easier. Um, but the lasers, they just like the white sails. And in most sailboat classes internationally, the sails are pretty much all white. So and the boats are white. We're back to the laser class. Not, mm -hmm. We can count the boats. I see four, eight out there right now. Nine, you missed one. You missed the one on the farthest left, or you missed one of the ones that's covered up. They're getting up. Six, eight, nine. Yeah, I got nine. So we're missing a few. I think one of the competitors had an issue with his boat. One of the Grand Bahama uh, competitors had an issue with the, a part on his boat. And so hopefully he'll make it for the second race. Yep. And so then we have at least two. With that, and like we, yeah. we were indicating a few minutes ago, the young lady who went to school today, she's not here, but she'll race tomorrow. How will that affect her in terms of standings and getting points? Well, she'll end up with uh, DNS, which is, did not start. And if we have nine boats out there, she would get 10 points. Mm -hmm. So the number of boats actually, yep, yeah, the, the number of boats registered. So it's more than the, the nine plus one. It's going to be the number we have registered plus one. So that may well be 16 points that's added on. So she'll be able to drop one of those scores, but she'll still be carrying a 16. So it's possible she could still win, but it's more likely that she'll be somewhere in the middle. Okay. All right. Maybe she'll get a chance to see under these mm -hmm. beautiful conditions here. Mm -hmm. And the sunfish look like they're lining up to start. So the lasers are all pretty competent sailors. Uh, in the sunfish class, we probably have one or two that are not 
quite as competent as the others. Uh, well, that'll be borne out when they start racing. So who are we looking for? Who are we looking for to be the top competitors now in the laser again? Very likely Norman Cartwright, Joshua Weech, and I believe Eliza Denning may may well be up there. Mm -hmm. If Craig Fergus is out there, he'll also be up front. They're our top uh, competitors. <laughs> Are they really rocking those boats out there? Oh, yeah. Having a lot of fun. Uh, is that, the, uh, we see the, the sails going back and forth. Oh, they're rocking, so they're it's, rocking the boats. Yeah. Uh, strictly speaking, in most racing, that's not necessarily allowed, not in the conditions that we have here. But uh, in this event, I think we're having a fun event, so they're all seeing what they can do. And the laser class now getting out? Oh, the sunfish. There's Sun a sunfish coming Sun up, yep. Mm -hmm. Sunfish coming up. Oh, that, 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 just looking at those seals. What a beautiful shot that yes, is, isn't yes, it? Yes, yeah. just looking at those seals. Well, that looks like Norman Cartwright in the lead uh -huh. by almost a boat length. And then you have Eliza, and I believe the other person on the other side is, is either Craig or Joshua. Very close racing Very for the first racing. three there. There's some issues with the sunfish. <laughs> There's so many boats right now on the water. Uh -huh. Norman Cartwright is just rounded in first. Looks like Eliza Denning just and current. 170 or 409 is the other boat. And the, the, the far boat to the east looks like uh, Joshua. Yeah. Yeah, the third one is Joshua Weish. And then I, this looks like Delano coming in. Yeah. Is it, no sale number? The number is here. Oh, right, no sale number. And then that looks like, uh, was it Sienna before? Yeah, looks like Sienna rounding fourth on the far side. Johannes made up his, yep, after his Johannes early start. Is, yep, Johannes is made up, coming up all right there. And then you can see one of the sailors is sailing a 4.7, it says on the bottom of the sail. That's a slightly smaller boat and probably because it's a smaller kid. Uh, what a, what a sight. Mm -hmm. And in this race, staying out of the way. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's a very small course with a lot of big boats. Oh, yeah, staying out of the way is important in using the strategy. Action. Just watching it from the view here under the tent. Well, they got a good breeze today, and we weren't expecting as much breeze today. Exactly. I was thinking more like about, uh, you know, 9, 10, but it, I think we're up around 13 knots of breeze, uh -huh. which is great. Yeah. It's a good thing all those sailboats moved out the way. You're right. <laughs> Got an opti out there. I wonder if that's a green fleeter. Sunfish, no. Hmm? Now they're coming around. Sunfish the first, are coming around. The first sunfish are coming around. First market. Couldn't tell you. Unfortunately, I can't tell you who's who because I don't know the numbers on the colors of the sails. Oh, and it looks like. 
the yellow and white sa sunfish sail did not is not going to sail the course. Oh, I think he's figuring it out now. So they have to go around the top mark and then around the little red one on the side. And the boat that came around the mark first went straight downwind. He's now getting going back up to the mark, and that's cost him at least two boats. Uh, looks like more like three boats he's lost. Let's see how good he is, if he can make back make that back up. And that's an Exuma sailor. And you can tell that because he's got a bright fluorescent orange shirt on. So pink is Long Island and fluorescent is he uh, loose. I, I think the I think the fluorescent orange is ME1, right? Yeah. So the lasers have rounded the windward mark for the second time. They are now on their way to the finish, and it really looks close between the top three boats. So that would be Norman, Joshua, and Miss Denning. So the race committee really has to keep their eyes open right now with so many boats on the water in two different class. Oh, they're having fun. <laughs> they're having fun is right. He's going to keep them busy. <laughs> I'm going to pull out my binoculars and see who this first boat is. So the finish line will be right in front of the beach between the furthest east yellow buoy and the race committee boat flying the orange flag. 31.617. Okay, so I can tell you who second is, and that is Tanaj Manos. No, sorry, that's in second and 31 is Zachary Cartwright. In, in third is Tanaj Manos of Exuma. And I believe in fourth is Josh Knowles of Exuma. And the boat leading the race is Aiden Summer of the BNSS. You see number 31? Number 31, yes, that's Zachary Cartwright from Nassau. Quick moving race. This is a very quick move. So now the lasers are finishing. One, two, three. I think Eliza ended up third. Was that, yep. um, that, that, that was um, Norman first, I believe, in the blue boat. And, right. and, and Joshua, Joshua. Weish in the red boat second. So some of the lasers do have different hull colors. Makes life nice. <laughs> Helps us to find them. And then we got a close race here in the sunfish coming around and 13 got inside of 47.34. 13 is from Exuma, that's Orlando Ferguson. And 47.34 is Steve Cash from Harbor Island. 47.26, so the blue and yellow sails, the dark blue and yellow sails, they're both Harbor Island sailors. And then the yellow and white sails, those are both Exuma sailors. Oh, we have a laser having issues with the uh, sunfish on starboard. So the laser had to keep out of the way of the sunfish on starboard. The boats are wrapping up. And mm -hmm. Who's in the 4.7? Do we know? Maybe. No. no. Don't think that's Jerome. I think he's too big to be in a 4.7. Could be Rico. Ah, uh, yeah, it might be Rico Major from St. Augustine's. And 
closer to us. We have three sunfish coming around together. But I don't have a number on that sail, so I don't know the first one. Second is Silas Monroe. And third is a couple of, um, I think third might be Trishana Brown and Isla Rule. Some boats out there in the harbor just watching the racing going on. Yes. They're enjoying the view while we on shore also enjoying the view here. And so last place in the sunfish is Jeremiah Dumont. Uh, he sailed with us for a couple weeks this summer. I don't think he's been in a back back in a boat since. So he's doing very well. But you can see the difference in the in the capabilities. So, so and that's just time in the boat. So the laser boats they have gone over in the corner, they're, rejuvenate and come right back up. Uh, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna wait. I think probably the race committee is gonna wait for the sunfish to finish before they start the lasers. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna have um, boats finishing and starting at the same time and. That becomes a bit of a complicated mess. <laughs> so sailors will stay out of the way till the sunfish finish. The lasers will. Right. Aiden Simon is still on the lead. He's just rounded the windward mark. And it looks like one of the boats from uh, Exuma. Looks like he might be rounding second. Although it's a white sail, who's that? That I don't know. I'm I'm trying to figure that one out. I think that okay. might be uh, I think that might be Zachary Cartwright, 31. And then the two, yeah. two Exuma boats by the looks of it with mm -hmm. the white and yellow sail. Mm -hmm. And you can see right there that is. Mm -hmm. Yep, those are two. Yep. 25. You forget we can look at this monitor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we're so used to looking out on the seas and getting mm -hmm. the bird's eye view. Four, four, seven, two, six, that's... 4726, I think, is a harbor, is a, is a Grand Bahama boat. He's coming around. Uh, and we see one coming in. No, right sorry, that's a Harbor Island boat. That's Hamari Hall, Amari Hall, 4726. 3941 is coming in. 3941 is Lucas Miller. Uh, oh, this, this is these two down here, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's... Certainly Lucas. And again, these are these two have not had a lot of time sailing. They've probably done one summer session. So it's a little bit more than they're used to. It's breezy for them. Let's see how they handle the jibe. They have to do teamwork to do this jibe. And I'm not sure they're very happy about it. <laughs> Oops, there we go. They got the sail across. Good job, guys. Then they'll worry about where they put the boat. They get, uh, once they got the sail across, now they can think about how to go back upwind. It does take a little bit of teamwork to sail in the boat together. No, how does that work? We're seeing persons with boats with one person. We're seeing sloops with two persons. Okay, so the, the sunfish allows there to be two people in the boat, but generally adults sail at one to a boat. And it's not difficult, but it does require teamwork because if I pull on the tiller and you pull on the sail, when you're supposed to be letting the sail out, mm -hmm. we're not gonna go very far, very fast. And that's the problem that the, the two of them just had. And, and they just gotta figure out how to talk to each other so they can finish that. And coming in to finish is the first, first boat. And unfortunately, I can't tell you who that is from here. I believe that's Aiden Sumner. Oh, that's correct, yep. And there's a battle for second place. Or third. And definitely for third mm -hmm. and fourth. But it looks like the second place boat, the white sail, is in control, managed to 
Yeah, and that's Meet the other two. Zachary Cartwright. So that's the other two boats with the yellow and white sails. Those are both from Exuma. That's Josh Knowles and Tanaj Manos. And it looks like Josh is, may have gotten it because of the fact that he's probably about 40 pounds lighter than Tanaj. <laughs> At least that's what Tanaj will tell you. <laughs> and I hear him. Uh, the next boat is a blue and yellow sail. I'm not sure. I think that's a that's a Har that's a Grand Bahama. No, Harbor Island. That's probably a Mari Hall from Harbor Island. Good job, Amari. And it's the red, white, and blue that I believe are from. Oh, I thought they were from Grand Bahama, but that's my mistake. They must be Nassau boats. Unfortunately, from this angle, we can't see the sail numbers. So we're now seeing the laser boats starting to get back on the line. Quick as that. They're getting ready. Well, the, the, they may start them with some of the sunfish not yet finished because there's a big, big separation there. It's just a question of how, how well they think that will be. We saw when the Optimus was sailing, the sunfish and the lasers were coming around. I'm looking to see when the E-class will start making their way. I, I don't think they're going to start moving until about 2.30. Okay, 2.30. 2.30. Up, up. Oh, we got a, we got a swimmer. <laughs> up at the top, Mark. Somebody went for a swim. So in this kind of breeze and the downwind, it gets a little it gets a little squirrely on the downwind. And if you're not quite sure, you can go you can go over. They look like they went over to weather. I believe they did. Yeah. So it's going to be a challenge to get the boat up yeah. and get her sailing again. But I'm sure they can do it. Yep. And hopefully one of those boats out there is a coach that can tell them. Oh, look, they got it up, almost. Are we watching it? Yeah. From the screen. Then we're know. watching now the um, one of the more recent sailors in the blue and yellow sail. So if we can go back to that shot where the boat went down and see what's happening out there. Oh, uh, they're, they're up? Yeah. Up. They, oh. they yeah. Got, and they got it up and they kept it up. Good job. Very good job. It feels like this breeze is freshening a little bit. Yeah. 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 Well, the longer you sit up here, the oh. cooler it gets. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. It may not be blowing any harder, but I am getting colder. Yeah. I feel it's for those up, kids out up, there, especially up, they don't up, have up, gear, oh, they're proper gonna go gear over on. Again, or is that it? Is that? Yep, they're going over again. Up and, yeah. So the problem that they have is I think they have a little too much main sheet. Mm -hmm. And uh, the sail is going too far out and they're losing control. And maybe they don't have a bang on. So there's a way they can tie, tie the sail down so it doesn't pop up. And I can see that theirs was popping up and that makes it more likely for them to, to flip. I'll find out who that boat is and for tomorrow we'll teach them how to do the system that stops that or makes it less likely that is they're gonna that, go swimming again. Is that the again. breeze coming from the back? Um, so, yeah, part of it is that they're... So can we leave the shot there for a while so we can see what's exactly what's happening? Yeah, yeah there they are. They're over. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's going on now? What's so it was, they're on the other side of the boat, on the centerboard, trying to pull the boat up. Okay, you can't, can't touch them. Yeah, yeah. No, and the skipper, the, no, the, uh, the coaches can't touch them. As soon as they get touched by somebody else outside, uh, they are no longer racing. So... If they decide that they've had enough, they tell us, or they tell the coach, and the coach will say, okay, I'll help you now. But until the... the yeah, they're back up again, uh -huh. that's like a young, a young lady. That's good. That's a young lady. Good for her. So, I don't know if... Is that Tyler Russell? Pardon me? Let's 
is Tyler Russell you're saying, so she, she's up and up. I think that might be Tyler. She's trying to get in. Good, she's keep yeah. going. It's good when they keep sailing. Yep, she's doing a great job. When the breeze comes up like this, you don't want to let the boom out too, too far. Otherwise, the boat really becomes that much more squ squirrely. When we say squirrely, it means it's more likely to flip. <laughs> yes, she is. And you, and you feel like you're totally out of control. I'm f with the breeze blowing up here, I'm feeling like I'm about to flip. <laughs> that, that is great getting back in the race. And a young lady. Twice she flipped over and get got back in the race. Right. I think when she finishes, they're gonna start the lasers just after she gets across the finish line. She's almost there now. to finish. There she's going in. Good job. There she comes through. Good job, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Again, she's probably got about a less than six months sailing. As a parent, you might be a little scared watching the kid boat flip over on the water. But she, she's all right, but like you say, you can't swim, you can't, can't sail. That's right, yeah. but also one of the things that uh, the coaches teach them is how to write boats. It's one of the first lessons. It's all about safety, and uh, you know, they all have to have their life jackets on. And for the Opties, we actually put the Optimus dinghy in the pool and capsize it there and have the kids go in and write it. So they get used to what happens if that, you know, if they do capsize yeah. when they're on the water. Yeah, the first thing you don't want them to be is afraid when they flip. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's nothing to be afraid of when you flip. It's just get the boat back up and knowing how to do it and not getting scared. Yeah, but, you're, you know, that, if you that, know how to do it, you're not one scared. priority is not being scared. That's, yeah. that's what that's what's going to happen. And that's why they do the, the capsized drills in the pool. So the laser class will be coming up next with their second series race here today, and then the Sunfish will be right back at it. And we've seen in the first race, who won the first race, came back and won the second series race. With that tough competition just now in the first laser class, can we see some adjustment in the way people will finish? May well do. <laughs> I, th I think that, uh, that there was one of our top Opti sailors who was sailing in the, in the first race, um, incredible sailor, Finley McKinney Lambert. And Finley was 35th out of 260 some odd boats at the World Championships. And uh, I'll also comment on Eliza, who's now moved into the laser class. She was the top girl at the North Americans. And uh, th these kids are really top level kids. And. This next race for the lasers, you may see the same thing, very tight, and it may be that Norman doesn't take this one. It could yeah. be Josh or Eliza's right there. So it's going to be fun to watch. What's coming up after this regard for these young skippers? What's next? On the I'll let next Lori week. handle that. <laughs> next week we have the KPMG Youth Winter Championships. Uh, this is next second and third of March. So that'll be a format that's significantly different than this. Uh, we will have three circles, which is three race courses. The closest one will probably be the Green Fleet. Uh, and then we will have the Optimus Championship Fleet and then the Sunfish Laser, and they will be much longer courses. So all of the kids, well, the Green Fleet will probably be out for about three hours each day. But the championship fleet will probably be out five hours, as well as the laser sunfish. Probably about five hours on Saturday and, and, and three and a half on Sunday. There will very likely be 
racing seven races for the series mm -hmm. and they'll drop one so probably four races on the saturday with three races on the sunday followed by presentation probably around 2 two thirty. with this being the, the the junior nationals and we have teams going away later on this year how do you pick your national teams and who goes where and to which event so each sailboat fleet class uh, is in charge of deciding what they're going to use as their qualifiers um, so the optimists have chosen the kpmg and another event for their qualifier i think the robert could talk to you about the lasers sure, the, the lasers their two qualifying events one is kpmg and the other's going to be their national well a junior national championship for the lasers so it, it, you could do one event you could do a number of events but the the fleets have chosen this time this is the way they want to do it um, in the sunfish at the moment we don't have they don't have a youth worlds um, so there are some events in sailing that anybody can go to and some events that are limited numbers per country so these events that they're using as qualifiers are for events that have a limited quota uh, we had there are many events that you can go to that you can take as many sailors as you want so whether or not somebody goes from here might simply be a question of funding with regard to the events that there are limited spots there is the ability to get funding for kids that don't have the funding to do it for the other events that's a little it's a little harder we got to find a way to raise the money for them still waiting on the second series race in the laser class and i heard a horn so i'm not sure if that's one minute to go because i don't see a flag other than a yellow flag and I think the yellow flag means they're going to do three times around instead of two times around. Correct. <laughs> and they make so their late race a so little the longer. the first race in Optimus, they shorten their second race. Mm -hmm. Now in the laser, they're extending their second mm -hmm. race. And probably, I would say, for the Green Fleet, they might not actually have more than one race for them. It's a bit breezy for the Green Fleet, and they may have, they may be thinking that, that let's not push them. It, it, you know, in the, in the Opti's, the Green Fleet, they can hit their head with the boom and, and, you know, that ends in tears and we really don't want to see any tears today. I know you, you're still smiling. You heard that good news from Minister Clay Sweeting about the drawings and everything getting ready. Dunkley, you were not here about the drawings for the National School of for Sailing. Uh, he said they will be, what say, it's coming out soon. So how important is it to get that school done and complete within the next year or two well it, to me it's, it's critical if we really want to it, you know drive sailing into the school programs here you know having a proper facility is very very key uh, and I'm not sure exactly where this one's going to be but uh, were they looking to locate it did not indicate yeah we haven't been told that okay yeah. but uh, Montague Bay I think is perfect place for learning and training uh, somewhere in this bay here I think would be absolutely fantastic but as far as the facility goes just imagine you know we can have more of the kids come for training here uh, from the other islands uh, if there's a, a bit of accommodation for it, it will really make things so much easier for the family island kids to come and train here in Nassau yes uh, so that absolutely and you know for the schools to have a a venue that they can go to to run their programs in conjunction with the bahamas sailing association the bahamas national sailing school to me just makes good sense i think the bahamas national sailing school and bsa have, have been very fortunate in that the nassau yacht club has you know allowed them to run their sailing programs out of that club so I think it's it's about time, actually, where this country, is, you know, the Bahamas have a national sailing school with its own venue. On a year, to year basis, how many new kids comes into your program and your program? So the summer sailing camp probably brings in 40 new kids a year, of which 25 continue in the fall. 
Uh, we, this year we have partnered with the government and reached out to the, we started with the CV Bethel sailing team. Uh, they have 41 kids in their team. Unfortunately, six of them, only six know how to swim. So these are the challenges that we're facing. We need, the kids need to know how to swim. And I think we've got uh, another school that's lined up that's ready to come. And they have, a, they have kids that can swim. So it, it's starting to become a question for us of, of, of manpower and equipment. Because we have, we only have about 15 sunfish. And those are the boats for the high school kids to teach them how to sail. So we can really take 15 at a time. And then that's it, right? It, with the opties, we have probably 35 opties, so we could start. But the primary school kids are almost none of them swim. So, and Robert can tell you about his school. Yeah. Royal Nassau Sailing Club, very, very, very small. We only have, uh, for our summer sailing camp, we had about 12 kids, of which six of those are still with us in our year-round program. And then for the others, on the uh, as far as the lasers go, we have eight, mm -hmm. of which four are really from Lyford Key. So all together right now, we do we have about uh, 15 to 18. Well, the laser sales. class. Just to interrupt you, the laser class. They are back on the water. Update. They just coming around the top mark. Yeah. Very close racing. Right. Why now, we and that looks like one of the two girls in the in the racer at the moment. That's just come around 609. Robert doesn't have. Robert's got the score sheet. You got it, man. <laughs> And six five eight. That's a that's another girl. That's that looks like uh, Sienna. Yep, Sienna six five eight. Mm -hmm. Six oh nine is Eliza. Yep. Okay. But I, I I would say that's Norman in the in the lead. In yeah, a, that looks a, like Norman from in, here. In, in the blue hall. Mm -hmm. Or it could be Joshua. So those are our top two sailors, uh, Joshua and Norman. And they're really muscling those boats downwind. Right. And I think th sitting third right now is Eliza again. Mm -hmm. Four, five, six, gosh, four, one, six, two. Eight, seven, eight. Okay, so Joshua's in the lead. That looks like Delano. Or is that Jerome? Not quite sure. And we're also looking at some of the sunfish who've just started. So the course is about to get crowded once again. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The more the merrier. Again, the sunfish and the colorful seals. And again, the yellow and white. Yeah, the yellow and white uh, sunfish are Exuma. The navy blue and yellow are Harbor Island. And yes, you got Joshua Weish in first in the lasers. I'm going to have to go. And then Check Norman out. Cartwright in second with a good lead ahead of Eliza Denning and Johannes Maritz and Sienna Jones behind Johannes. Thank Robert Dunkley for joining us here. He's going to try and get us some of those young skippers from the Optimus class. Laurie? Crowded on there. It's crowded out there. Isn't it fantastic? I just love the colors on those sunfish. You can see it right there. Uh-huh. Love those colors. But Everybody else, you got to figure out what they're sailing from, the color of their boat or the color of their outfits. Yeah. There's Johannes Maritz, who just took a tack. 
Now, there are lots of numbers on this, on these sails right here, the laser. What does all those numbers represent? So basically, that is how many lasers there are in the world. As a hull gets built, the hull gets given a hull number, and the hull number goes on the sail. So, for example, I'm looking at 194,609. So who keeps an update on that? The, the class and the manufacturers, mm -hmm. or the manufacturer. So there's probably been 200,000 laser hulls built. Um, the sunfish have a different numbering system. They generally have numbers by country. Great. And the Optis also have numbers by country. But um, so you see the U.S. sale number has 20,529. There's a U.S. sale on the beach. So there's at least, I think there's actually about 33,000 U.S. sailboats. Whereas our numbers are only, uh, well, we have some numbers in the 500s, but that was when we started the, the, uh, the class before we understood the international uh, requirements. We were assigning sail numbers by the hundreds to islands. So Nassau was 100, Grand Bahama was 500, Eleuthera was 300, Long Island was 200. Uh, but that has changed now because our sailors cannot compete internationally with those numbers. Okay. You're not only getting a good view, but you're also getting a learning experience out here on these young sailors, their sloops, the numbers, the colors, the class. Yep. And it looks like some of the sunfish are getting intermixed with the lasers going upwind. And they can handle that. They, they, they've sailed them together. In the right conditions, the sunfish is as fast as a laser. So the difference is, is that the, the, the laser is a little bit more of a handful of a boat to sail, even if you're the same size. Um, I sort of compare them to horses, and, and, a, and a, a laser's like a bucking bronco. When you flip, you're in the water before you blink. And the sunfish is a little bit like a stubborn mule. You know you're going over, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's happening, and nothing, about, nothing you can do about it, just hang on for the ride. And here we go, we got Finley McKinney, Lambert. We're gonna put a little headset on him. Let him do it. And uh, we'll interview Finley. Race leader, won both races, did you not? All right. Good job. Tell us about your race. We're not joined by Finley McKinley Lambert, who won both races this morning in the Optimist. Tell us about it. How was it out there for you this morning? Um, it was very unstable, <laughs> which made it quite difficult to choose where you were going to go and where to start. But I think with a lot of th with a think with a lot of thinking and uh, looking at the wind and understanding what it was doing. It wasn't super clear, but you could kind of see where you needed to go. How would you describe the conditions in those two races out there on the water, the wind, the seas? Uh, I would say that the first race was a little bit more stable, and there was more steady breeze and shifts, whereas on the second race, there was a bigger shift, and um, the course stayed the same, which made the course um, quite off to one side, which made it um, a little bit more difficult. And you were able to get two on the, your sails today. How does it feel to have two races? Um, it feels very good because I don't know if I'm going to be doing so well in the E-Class. So I'm hoping that I can transfer my skills from Optimus into E-Class. E-Class is the much bigger boat. Uh, you're getting set to go there probably in the next hour. How are you preparing for that? Um, I'm just preparing myself mentally and remembering what I did last time and trying to fix my mistakes that I made last time because it's very different from traditional optimist where 
every boat is the same. Tell us how did you get involved in sailing? Uh, my family has always been involved in sailing and um, I was just introduced to it at a very young age and I was put into it and then I just kept going. What do you love most about sailing? I would say probably being out on the water. I just love being out on the water and to me the, the water is always um, something that you can count on and now being on the ocean is most of the time you can it's very stable. Relax and just be to yourself. Exactly. Uh, how how has the year been for you? How many any major competitions you've been to for folks who are watching on screen and want to know about you? Um, I have not done any big uh, regattas this year. I have done one team racing regatta in the in the states where I won with a team of uh, three other Puerto Ricans. But that was my only big regatta for the year so far. And. And the other, the Puerto Ricans that were on the team, they were they were all girls, right? Yes, that's uh, correct. Uh, so not all the teams were like that, right? Yeah, most of them were just uh, mostly boys. Yeah. So what do you see as a future in Sydney? You want to go to the Olympics? What do you see as a future in Sydney? Um, I would like to, go, going to the Olympics would be very, very cool. And trying to find the right boat that suits me to go to the Olympics or... Um, do professional sailing. I think that's mainly what I'm focusing on right now, finding what I would like to do, because the optimist can't do it when you get older. So what's the race strategy to come back on Friday now on the optimist? What is your strategy? You know, they'll be coming back because you already want to. They're going to try and beat you. But how do you pull them off? Uh, my plan is to have a good start and to make sure that I'm focusing not on them, but on the wind and making sure that I can keep myself focused. And from there, I think it'll just be me using, doing what I always do and just focusing and sailing fast. Okay, thanks a lot and congratulations. Get, congratulations. Great, getting ready for the E-class. We wish you the best of luck in that as well. Thank you very much. All right, we go back to sailing out there, the laser class out there on the water. Yeah, the laser around the sunfish, yep. Thanks. Good job. Any update, Laurie? Oh, so... Well, I've been sitting up here talking with you, too, so <laughs> I will work. So we got um, sunfish and lasers out there. Uh, we have one laser, one sunfish having a little bit of a trouble from Grand Bahama, I think. But they're getting the boat underway now. They're all coming around through the gate. And the usual suspects are in the lead. I think you got Joshua and, and Norman duking it out on the far right. And I think they've let uh, Eliza and Sienna come over this, come over on the other side to get away with them, get away from them. Uh, Johannes Moritz looks like he stayed on the same tack following the two leaders. So let's see how the split worked out for the girls. We can see a lot of folks from the Tourists are just on the shore, just watching the races and just amazed at how these youngsters are really attacking these boats and using their agility, maneuvering, and they have their cameras out and pointing and saying, wow. Yeah, it's great. They are just on the shoreline watching. And it looks like we might, the first leader in the sunfish class might be one of the Exuma boats. That would be Tanaj or Joss. So the two of them do really enjoy the heavy air. I think that might be Joss. There they go, coming around. Yeah, first one is around. On the second lap here. The course was extended here on, the, on in the second race. Yeah, I think the lasers have been uh, asked to sail three times around. I don't know if the sunfish were. I missed that 
miss that particular flag. How can you tell? Ah, so uh, this was unusual, but there, the flags almost all have meanings. Uh, in this particular instance, they advised us uh, at the skippers' meeting or the competitors' meeting this morning that if they wanted them to sail three laps, they would put a yellow flag up before the start, and we observed that yellow flag before the start of this race. Gloria, I really appreciate you being here. <laughs> Sailing is not an easy sport to call and to see from a distance, but I really appreciate you being here. You're giving me so much knowledge about five minute start, the flag, and all those stuff. Oh, Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. If I was a little bit younger, I might have joined the National Union. Absolutely. <laughs> sailing school. Absolutely. But hey, yeah. you're never too young, never too old, you know. You can still learn to sail. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, we don't start you I, in these boats. We start I, you in a little bit more sedate boats. Of course, I got to learn to swim. <laughs> oh, yeah. First, you got to learn to swim. Uh, oh, that's all on you, my friend. You can learn how to swim. Yes. Ice over here. You're shot. never too young, like I said. Never. There we got Jaw Snowles in the lead and the Sunfish being uh, chased down by, I'm not sure who that is, unfortunately. Uh, might be a Grand Bahama boat or might be a Nassau boat. And these kids got to come back out here later on this evening for the opening ceremony, mm -hmm. 6 o'clock. So mm -hmm. we've got to try and get as much races in as possible. I think that's why they're starting it, because this opening is set for 6 o'clock this evening. They'll be back out here tomorrow morning at 10, and then Saturday is the final day. Where I want thousands and thousands to come on down and watch this spectacle of an event called the Sadua Knowles Junior Sailing Nationals. It's going to be epic. And it's great, you know, unlike most of our regattas, you can see these kids right off the beach. Mm -hmm. Normally they're so far away, you can't even see the, what the kid is wearing. Today we got the, the, the gate mark or the leeward mark. You could throw a stone at the leeward mark from where we are on the beach. That's what I like about the junior sailing. Like you say, you're getting a hands-on feeling. Mm -hmm. You can see exactly what they are doing right there because there's, you can see from the shore, unlike with some of the big boats, they go way out there. You don't know what they're doing. You have to use your binoculars. So you have to watch the big screen. But you can go right there like those two were doing a few minutes ago, watch on the screen and see exactly what they're doing. And you can really appreciate it when you can see exactly how these kids are maneuvering in these boats. Good job. Here they come in. Uh -huh. And it looks like the first finisher in the Sunfish was Joss Knowles. If I can get a number. And the second finisher was... Two, six, one. I'm going to find that. I will get that in a minute. Before the next sa sailboat comes across the line, I will tell you who the second place. I think second place was Aiden Sumner. Aiden won the first race. Yes, that's true. Aiden won the first race, and he sailed for second, so he has three points. And that looks like Norman Cartwright was first in the laser, followed immediately by Joshua Weish. In third place, Eliza Denning. So the three books that you, you and Dunkley said would finish one, two, three, those. They just pretty much did, yeah. yeah. Here we got Sienna Jones fighting. I'm not sure. Oh. Oh, and somebody missed the finish. I think. Yes. She missed she missed the they're not used to having a gate right there at the finish. And instead of Instead of uh, going th between the boat and the mark, she went the other way. And I believe that's Silas Monroe, who's just finished in the Sunfish, and Johannes Moritz, who's just finished in the Laser. So the competition heading tomorrow will be stiff in the Laser between mm -hmm. Joshua and Aiden. McKinney Lambert has the competition right where he wants them in the Optimus. See what's happening in the sunfish. They come in. It looks like our green fleet are starting to launch. I 
and the Korean fleet. The Korean fleet are all on the beach. Uh, uh, describe that, 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 that like the, the so this little is babies. The, the, yeah, these are the kids in the Optimus class. Not all of them are babies, but you can tell that quite a few of them are very small. I think our youngest sailors here are nine years old. And uh, these are the beginners. So you could get a 15-year-old beginner in a, in a small enough. Not, not often you get a 15-year-old small enough to sail the, the Optimist. So how far will they go out? Uh, so they will really make this course a lot smaller for them. Mm -hmm. um, these kids are going to struggle in this wind today. Uh, hopefully we will have enough coach boats between them and the, the start line because that's not a lot of water between the start line and the, the breakwater if they're running into difficulties. Well, like I can say with sailing, girls and boys sail together, and it doesn't matter the age, like in track and field, you'll have under 15, under 13, or under 17, mm -hmm. and that's what I may come out here not knowing that once you're in an age group, you see up the sailing is a go in one years of experience. Yeah. And, and in some boats, you know, you have, it's, it's open, and, and so you have girl skippers, boy crews, Sometimes you have two girls in a boat. And in fact, here we've got a couple of teams where um, one of the teams is two girls, and I think another team is two boys. So McKinney explained that he sailed with three girls. How did that work? He sailed what? With three girls when he went to an international competition. Uh, so he was probably sailing a boat that was a four-man boat. Uh -huh. uh, you know, you can have, just like in the sloops, right? You got the, the E-class, which is two or three, all the way up to the A, which is eight or 12. Mm -hmm. So in sailboat racing, there's everything from one man boat to 40 people on a boat. Um, there aren't too many boats that sail with 40 people on it anymore. Maybe, <laughs> maybe more like 12. Um, but you know, in the old days of the America's Cup, they probably had 20 or 30 people on the deck just to pull the sails up because they had five or six sails on the boat. Uh, now now we got these high-tech boats that are foiling and they're pulling people from rowing. And what all classes do they have at the Olympics? Because the Olympics adds new events each year, pulls events each year. What all class of sailing is there at the Olympics? Level? So there's about seven classes in the current upcoming Olympics. Uh, you have kite boards, which is a male and female event, so they sail separately. You have windsurfers, again, male and female. Um, you have the laser, which is again a male boat and a female boat. And in fact, the female boat is smaller. Uh, well, the boat itself is not smaller, but the amount of sail you put on the boat is smaller, and the size of the mast is smaller, but the same hull. You have a 470, which is actually a mixed event, so one male, one female must be in the boat, and they don't care which one is driving. So you'll have some teams with a male driver and some teams with a female driver. Um, they have the NACRA 17, same thing, mixed. And doesn't matter who's helming. So they, in sailing, they have three different types of event. They have single sex events. They have open events, which mean the team can be anything. Or they have a mixed event, which means usually means you have to have equal numbers of male and female. And in an open event, you can have two boys or two girls, or a boy and a girl. So coming up next will be the. Green Fleet. Green Fleet, that's mm -hmm. the beginners. These are the beginners. The beginners to the laser mm -hmm. and the Sunfish, they have completed their two series races today. Also, the Optimus has completed their two series races. And then coming up later on this afternoon, we still have the E-Class to do. So lots of sailing still to do here at the Sedimentos Junior Sailing Regatta here from the Monarchy Foreshore. Shore. We're gonna take another break. Be right back, don't you dare go anywhere. The young and future sailors are coming up next. All right.
Immediate response, when to New York, Houston, then to Atlanta to locate, celebrate, and feature outstanding Bahamians making waves throughout the USA. Monday, February 26th, and Tuesday, February 27th, Immediate response broadcast live from the Bahamas Consulate in London. Join the ZNS radio and television network as we interview Bahamian movers and shakers in and around Great Britain as immediate response continues spanning the globe, identifying standout Bahamians making marks internationally. For more information on how you can place your TV or radio commercials or be a part of the immediate response global series, call 502-3800 or email phoenixinstitute at gmail.com. Sponsored by Fidelity Bank Bahamas Limited. The Royal Bahamas Police Force, the Ministry of Tourism, Checkers Cafe, the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources, Bahamas Retina and Eye Care Services, Bahamas Harvest Church, the Bahamas Development Bank, Battery and Tire Specialists, AFD Management, Tiki Bikini Hut, the Financial Intelligence Unit, Javon Medical Center, Cafe Channing Noel, and by Art Development. Did you know that if a fire starts in your home, you may have as little as two minutes to escape? Keep your family and home safe with these few fire safety preparation and prevention tips. Ensure that your home has broken smoke detectors. They will alert you if there is smoke and fire in your home. Install a smoke detector on every level of your home, inside each bedroom and outside each sleeping area. Test smoke detectors every month and change the batteries every six months. Home fires can spread rapidly and every second counts. Create an escape plan and practice it with everyone in your home. Make sure everyone can safely escape in less than two minutes. Keep escape routes as clutter-free as possible so no one trips or fall on the way out during an emergency. In addition to smoke detectors, fire extinguishers is an important device to have on hand. To use a fire extinguisher, remember the acronym PASS. Pull the pin, aim the nozzle, squeeze the handle, and sweep from side to side at the base of the fire. We must all do our parts to ensure that our families and homes are safe in the event a fire occurs. On behalf of the Commissioner of Police, the Director of Fire Services, and all officers of the Fire Department, let's work together to help prevent fires because fire safety is everyone's responsibility and the life you save may be your own. Lighthouse on San Salvador to let you know that marine protected areas make dollars and cents. A well designed and managed network of protected areas can generate income for nearby communities. From MPA managers to lodges to eco tours, there is money to be made. Healthy marine ecosystems help to protect our islands from climate change and other impacts that we cannot control. Healthy coral reefs help to break down big waves and mangroves absorb storm surge and help to protect our coastline. Older and larger fish tend to carry more and healthier eggs than younger fish. Fish replenishment areas will allow fish to grow bigger and ensure that we have more fish now and in the future. In our replenishment area, fish are free to grow and reproduce. As their populations increase, more fish will spill over into other areas where fishermen can increase their catch and their income. I support the establishment of a marine protected area on my island. I support the establishment of marine protected areas on my island. I support the establishment of marine protected areas on my island. I support the establishment of a marine protected area on my island, and you should too. And you should too. And you should too. And you should too. See the future with Bahamas, Bahamas Protected. protected. Colon cancer is the third most common cancer affecting Bahamians. Your risk of developing colon cancer is increased if you have a personal history of colorectal cancer or colon polyps, a family history of colon cancer, or inflammatory bowel diseases such as ulcerative colitis. Other factors that can increase your risk of developing colon cancer are low fiber, high fat diets, 
a sedentary lifestyle, obesity, smoking, and alcohol. You can take steps to reduce your risk of colon cancer by making specific lifestyle changes. Eat a variety of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. These foods contain fiber, minerals, vitamins, and antioxidants, which may play a role in cancer prevention. Drink alcohol in moderation or not at all. Do not smoke. Exercise with a goal of getting in at least 30 minutes each day. If you've been inactive, start slowly and gradually build up to 30 minutes. Also, talk to your doctor before starting any exercise program. Maintain a healthy weight. If you're at a healthy weight, maintain it by combining a well-balanced diet with daily exercise. If you need to lose weight, ask your doctor about healthy ways to achieve your goal. Colon cancer screening can also help to prevent colon cancer or lead to its early detection when treatment is most effective. If you're 45 years or older, speak to your doctor about having a colonoscopy or some form of colon cancer screening that may be appropriate for you. I'm Dr. Eugene Marcus Cooper. Pay attention to your health. Get the facts and discuss colon cancer with your physician today. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health in partnership with the Public Hospitals Authority. A new year brings a new lineup. ZNS is bringing you what you want to watch, so don't blink. What's Trending Lifestyles in the Afternoon starts out the daily programming at 4 p.m. This is followed by Unleashed at 5 p.m., a show that dives headfirst into all topics ranging from headline grabbers to current events. At 6 p.m., Grand Bahamas, The Bunk Spot, graces the airwaves, a review of Grand Bahamas recovery. 6.30 p.m. brings the news from Grand Bahama, and 7 p.m. brings The Big Show, the new Bahamas Tonight, followed by a continuation of News with the Bahamas Tonight, access now at 7.30 p.m. News with a new twist. Surprise, surprise, at 8 p.m., The Rundown, nightly news analysis for all of the big stories of the day. And wrapping things up at 11 p.m. is The Bahamas Tonight, bringing you fresh news. Only the sun covers the Bahamas better than ZNS. We are here in the town of need. There's no discrimination. The mission is to relieve the suffering. We volunteer. We deliver care. With donors and partners, we're always here to turn compassion into action. Protecting life and health with our training throughout the years. We empower to heal the This message brought to you by the Bahamas Red Cross Society in conjunction with the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. Here at the Monarchy Four Shore for the Sedona Knowles National Jewelers Sailing Championship, we have already seen three classes have already hit the water. That is the Optimus. They sailed two races this morning. The Sunfish and the Laser Class. They have completed. And on the water right now, it is the Young Skippers. The Skippers have been just sailing for about a year or so. But joining us now 
is Therese Rowell. He's one of the sailing advisors, I should say, at CV Bethel, one of the government schools here in the 242 that actually has sailing as part of their curriculum. How did that come about? Well, some years ago, Mr. Shelton Gibson, who was vice principal at the time, he saw a need to uh, engage young persons in, a, in this actual sport that was actually on a decline. And they needed something to do. He said, okay, let's try training them out of sales. So it started with that idea. He got a group of young fellas and young ladies together. We, they actually went to Andrus to cut down some Kamalmi wood. We actually started with the small Kamalmi boats. And then from there, we went on to building the actual uh, E-class boat, Old Faithful, and the rest is history. Normally, if a, a student in school, they more be into basketball, track, and field. How much interest do you have from the students in terms of boat building and sailing? Well, there, there isn't an overwhelming interest, but there is an interest. Keep in mind, we are an archipelago. So sailing or travel by water is what I mean by getting around. And so since sailing is a very interesting sport and persons like to be on the water, they actually gravitate to it a lot. But are you from the island? Yes, sir. Good. Okay, so that's why you're in Zaino Shed. <laughs> How do you get Nassau City kids to, to, to be into sailing? Because they, 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 they don't know about much about sailing. Well, sailing. believe it or not, a lot of people like the water. Mm -hmm. People love the water. They love activities done on or nearby the water. So they, once you picture them, there's the idea of getting on the water, getting in the boat, scooting across the water in an actual boat powered by by wind, it grabs their attention. Are y'all building any boats right now at CV Bethel? Right now, we're in the process of repairing Old Faithful. It's been in this little disrepair right now, so we're in the process of repairing that to put that back on the water. Hopefully for next year, during regatta, that'll be completely finished and we can actually sail our boat again. And how do, how do you keep them in such an expensive sport, and how, how is it funded? Well, it's funded by one the ministry and then private sponsors. And it's working out? It's working out so far. And how do you feel about the junior regatta being here? Do you have any students from CV Bethel participating this year? Well, right now we have two students right from CV Bell participating in the junior regatta. They would have already uh, participated in the sunfish race, and then they're going to be just participating in the E-class race as well. That's Rashawna Brown and LaShawn. Do you have more interest from girls or boys? Actually, it's even. It's, even, it's evenly matched. We have girls and boys. Do you hope to see it go into other, other government schools? Well, the plan is right now to try to expand the program as much as possible to all the government schools. We're starting off with at least 11 of the government schools right now that's split between junior and senior schools. And we're trying to get as much persons on the program, try sailing clubs in the different schools, and try to get everybody interested and out there. Because that's, just, keep in mind, sailing is now the national sport. So you want to get or attract as much people as possible. How did you get involved in the sport? I know Sheldon gets in, he's from the island. How did you get involved in boat building and, and, and sailing? Well, being from the island myself. What island is that? Illusion. Illusion. Okay. Yes, being from the island myself, I always had love for the water. Yes, sir. Softball capital of the Bahamas. Softball. <laughs> being from the island myself, I always had a love for the water and uh, an interest in actually getting on the water and sail. And then when Mr. Gibson approached me about it, I just jumped on board. So you took over for Gibson? Well, I assist. I didn't take over, but I assist. So he's, he still helps now and again? Yes, yeah, so sir. He's still present, he's still, he's still helps. And all of them, he goes to all his regatta. His atmosphere has a nice atmosphere comparing to the best of the best. It's just basically the same. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how much of a motivation is this for your young skippers coming out here seeing that they're getting the same royal treatment to, to help them go further? Well, it shows them that, one, there is an interest in what they're doing. They're not forgotten. So I believe it's a, it's a boost for their ego and their self-esteem. 
All right, Taz Roll is the advisor over there at CV Bethel. Thank you so much for joining us. The youngsters are on the water as we speak, and then the E-Class Lucy will be competing in the regatta for the first time. Lots happening, lots to do, lots to you to come on down and enjoy yourself in this great family fun-filled kids atmosphere. It's only for the kids? No, it's also for the adults. We'll be right back after this break. What does disability look like? In a busy airport terminal? At the check-in counter? At security checkpoints? Or even in baggage claim? Passengers with hidden disabilities often go unnoticed. Globally, one in seven persons have some form of a disability. 80% of those disabilities are non-visible. In an airport environment, workers are often unaware of hidden physical mental or neurological disabilities that some passengers live with. This can lead to frustration and a less than ideal travel experience. So, how do we make the invisible more visible? At LPIA, we've implemented the Sunflower Lanyard Program. The lanyards are visual cues for airport workers to immediately identify passengers who might need additional assistance. NAD is teaming up with the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities and key stakeholders at LPIA to launch the internationally recognized initiative. We're joining more than 180 airports and 26 countries already in the program. NAD is the first organization in the Bahamas to recognize the Sunflower Initiative. It's a way to show our continued commitment to making LPIA a safe, welcoming, and inclusive airport for all. Passengers needing to secure a free Sunflower lanyard can email sunflower at nas.bs or call 1242-397-8600. For more information, visit www.nassaulpia.com. Watching the ZNS Network, the People Station. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Akush Lapinder, and this is the ZNS News Update at the Hour. Financial Secretary Simon Wilson today defending the deficit at the halfway mark, assuring that the second half of the fiscal year will prove stronger, leading to a reduction in the deficit in line with the overall target. On the opposing end, the government is touting its primary balance, that is, its cash flow position, which Wilson stressed improved considerably, moving from 42.4 compared to 3 million dollars during the same period last year. A 33-year-old man nursing injuries in hospital after being shot in the lower back last night. The incident taking place on Gladstone Road. Police say the victim was driving south along that road when an unidentified vehicle overtook him, followed by another. Soon after, the victim heard gunshots and felt an impact to the rear of his car, only to discover he had been shot. And Bahamians called upon to show their national pride tomorrow, corporate dress-up day. Government ministries and agencies, private institutions, NGOs, tertiary institutions and schools are all expected to participate in the initiative to demonstrate their patriotism and creativity. That ends the ZNS News update at the hour. Once again, I'm Akush Lapinder. Good afternoon.
everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Drop. We want to have a good time tonight, y'all. I was hanging out by Winkies off the Michael Road. We want to have some good fun, some good vibes, some good, good food, some good drinks, some good music. You can't forget the music. We can have some good girls, whether it be light hey, skin, hey, dark hey, skin, brown hey, skin. Hey, 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 uh, hey. Ain't none of that. The Drop. This Thursday at 9 p.m. Only on the Zeniness Network. I don't know, but you what kind of cars are you parking on? I don't even know where to park. Again, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Look at this way. Like, you ain't getting nowhere to go. Don't park him. Just don't park him. Don't park him. Yeah, that's how he gets. No, you can't park him. You can't park him. I ain't gonna be that long. I ain't gonna be that long. I'm the gas watcher. I'm gonna do it. Hey, what's going on, dog? I'm gonna tell you we shouldn't park him. Not a spray park him. I tell you we shouldn't park him. No, you wanna do a spray. My bad, big, my bad, big bro. And he got a sticker inside. This ain't this mod, though. We got to move. This is a honey gas. But we got to move. Don't. We can move right now. Sorry. Be considerate. Don't use disabled parking spaces without a decal in your vehicle. This message is brought to you by the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities. know that one third of all traffic fatalities occur as a result of excessive speed. Excessive speed impedes a driver's point of perception, which affects braking distance. In the inner city, residential areas, and high pedestrian traffic areas, the speed limit ranges from 15 to 25 miles per hour. On the outskirts of the island, especially where a sign is not posted, the law dictates that the speed limit shall be 30 miles per hour. The maximum speed limit for the Commonwealth of the Bahamas is 45 miles per hour. Here are some safety tips for you. Avoid aggressive and distracted driving. Reduce excessive speed and drive at the appropriate speed to suit the current road conditions. Avoid operating a vehicle while impaired by alcohol or drugs. Be vigilant and always maintain good visibility of the road and be mindful of other road users, such as pedestrians. Leave out in a timely manner to compensate for potential traffic delays. Even one life lost to traffic fatality is one life lost too many. On behalf of the Royal Bahamas Police Force Traffic Division, please slow down. This public service announcement is brought to you by FG Insurance Agents and Brokers, the Royal Bahamas Police Force Traffic Division, and the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. Good afternoon and welcome back here to the Monarchy for sure. This is the Winners National Junior Sailing Championships in full swing with three more days of competition. Two more to be exact. We are on day number three. Coming up next will be the E-Class. We're really proud to be joined by two young skippers from CV Bethel. Let me let them introduce themselves. Your name? My name is Treshana Brown and I'm the treasurer of CV Bethel Sailing Club. My name is LaShawn Palimas, and I'm a sailor at TV Battle Sailing Club. And you two just came off the water? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What did you sail? What division class you sailed in? I sailed in Sunfish. So how was it? I sailed Sunfish for like three, four months. So I feel at home. Mm -hmm. And I think I asked everyone, how did you get involved in sailing? You tell me you're two Nassau kids. How did you how did you get involved in sailing? Not track, basketball, soccer, softball, something. I joined sailing club in grade 10. And at that time, since COVID was in full swing, sailing club at CV wasn't doing anything. So they actually introduced me to the Nassau Yacht Club, and that's where I started. What do you enjoy most about sailing and being out there in the water and being around boats? I enjoy the waves crashing against the boat and the wind in my face. So how long you say you've been sailing? Three, four months. Three, four months, and you're already in the junior regatta sailing with the big kids? Yes, yeah. sir. And you're, you're holding your own. Is this something you wanted to do? Or? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And how much 
of a fun is it sailing with other people from your school? It's and beating I them. <laughs> <laughs> I find it fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. How was it out there for you today? Uh, it was good. Um, kind of rough, but being new to it, I started to get it. And you used three, four months as well? Uh, no, sir. Uh, one week in two days. What? You've only been sailing one week in two days? Yes, sir. Oh, what was the hardest part about catching on? What was each uh, Learning the course. That's what the hardest thing for me. But other than that, um, I got enough practice. Before that, have you ever sailed before? No, sir. So you just jumped into that boat and in the week and a half ago and just sailed? Yes, sir. That is really amazing. And you're sailing with some youngsters who've been sailing eight and nine yeah, years. How do you, you compare it already? Um, I see it beating upon me, but <laughs> after a while, I could get it down park and I'll start to do the beating. If I was a coach in your school, I'd say, you are tall enough, let's go play basketball. Why did you want to do sailing? Uh, well, uh, I'm a multi-sport athlete, so I already do that. And when I joined the sailing club, um, Due to COVID, I went to the island of Auckland. So sailing kind of reminded me of the island, so I jumped into that. And what do you see your future in this sport? Well, um, pursuing a career as a professional athlete, I see me sailing and representing the Bahamas. What about you? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. If you wasn't sailing, what else would you be doing? Um, Probably swim. Swimming? Yes, sir. It's interesting, three three to four months and just one week of sailing and they're already out here to the regatta. It's, it's an amazing story and it's coming from a school like C.V. Bethel, how many kids are in the club? Uh, we have 42 members. Wow, a lot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But um, we practice safety first, so swimming would be the main priority. Did you beat him? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think. Did you? You didn't beat him. You only had one week of training. You had four months. Did Did you beat him? Somewhat. You, she She beat you. Well, he was on the same team. <laughs> but, um, she just was the guy to assist me to mm -hmm. do what I think I should have done today. Mm -hmm. So it's so great to have you guys up here and talking about sailing. And, and, and I'm still in shock that you're only a week and a half. What, what made you say, let me compete in this, even though I only have a week under my belt? Well, uh, I was scared to even be a part of the race this morning. Um, but when I talked to the persons in charge, they said the most thing which was important was having fun. So I think that encouraged me to go to sail today. Did you realize anything different going out there? You, you relaxed, you were able to talk to yourself, enjoy the No, sir. Place. It's all fun, so it's natural. I know you're scared to tell me you'll beat him. You can beat him again tomorrow, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm to beat him. <laughs> uh, or you can teach him. So you have to come to her to learn some stuff? Yes, sir. But did you teach him today? That... He... Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't know how to skip her properly. I don't know how to skip her. Neither one is skipper. <laughs> Staring the boat. Uh -huh. So he has to learn that. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to really master the sailing and what you do? Um, I haven't really mastered it fully yet. Mm -hmm. I can sail by myself. So me skippering the boat took like at least like two months. And what else do you feel you need to learn to get up there with the rest? Probably holding the main sheet and steering the boat at the same time. Well, congratulations and best of luck. Thank you guys, I'm so proud of you. One and a half week, three months and already making a mark here in the sport. And hopefully tomorrow I go, I go have my goggles and my <laughs> binoculars, binoculars and everything <laughs> and make sure that she, she wins tomorrow again. And, then when, you, and, then, when you, and then when you go back to school on Tuesday after midterm, she'll be bragging. That's what's up. That's what's up. I'll be bragging. <laughs> and then she'll be calling upon the assembly. <laughs> well, thanks a lot and congratulations and the best of luck tomorrow, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Well, coming up later on this afternoon, it is the E class. And earlier this morning, we heard about the British High Commissioner donating an E class boat to the National Sailing School. And we had a chance to speak with one of the country's top boat builders, Mark Knowles, on how that came about.
How pleased were you uh, when you were informed that the British High Commissioner wanted you to build a boat like this? Well, um, they, they, I was, I mean, it's a good idea what they're doing. And, um, I was glad they chose me to build it for them, because you know got a, a few more boat builders in the Bahamas. But they chose me to do the work, so, yeah. So, talk about what went into building this boat and how long did it take? Well, all together it take me about three weeks, but I was busy doing other things at the same time. But when I built, a, when I started the first week, I framed out, put the ribs in a plank down. Then I stopped. Then I came back, put the deck on. Then I came did the Mike Brown way. So all together, take like a three weeks to complete the whole boat. You, you, all your boats, you believe, said this one is going to be the fastest. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess the records show all the boats I built fast, but. Like I said, the first, this is the first boat I built. Well, it's the second one I built this size from the first boat I built in 1975. It was just was E-Class. And then I built a second E from my nephew, Collins on the Long Island. So Christmas, she ain't finished yet, but she'll be ready for Georgetown. And then this one here. But you know, majority, I built CB and A, the bigger ones. Hoping that the E-Class now will, will take advantage of this and start to come out more boats? Yeah, I need to come on more now. What I what I what they need what I need to do now is they had E class money for the children. But now since grown up selling them, if I build one of these now, they only allow a twenty foot mass. If I build one for me, I put in a twenty five foot mass and sixteen, seventeen foot boom. The race. Give us some give us some specs of this one. This 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 one. Yeah, well E class is twelve foot two and a half. We'll gotta be under three twelve foot three. And the width could be any so you build it wide as you want, and the depth could be whatever you feel like. Only you have to be under 12 foot 3, the length. The width and the depth don't make no difference. So it took you three weeks to build this? Yep, three weeks in total. Well, there you can see the youngsters there on the water now joining me here up at the Montague Foreshore. They are young, but they could be considered the veteran of the sports. I remember you were a young boy, like six, seven. Now you're a big 17-year-old. I remember when you were just walking around, just wanting to be with the big boys. Welcome to the broadcast. Let people know who you are. I'm Norman Cartwright. Uh, Josh Ruiz. And those were the two guys just now in that laser division just put the back and forth. How was it out there for you? It was really tricky. Josh put up a good fight, and I managed to pull out in a head. You all two were back and forth there. One got this race, the one got this race, and then we saw some strategy being used as well. Yeah, strategy really plays a big part of the sport. Honestly, if you don't have a good strategy, then you won't be able to perform. But this is your good friend, your good sailing buddy, but you want to beat him out there, right? <laughs> oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How was it? Oh, it was good. It was racing. Um, the wind is from the land, so it's a bit tricky, but uh, it wasn't bad. Now, how do you adjust now as you go into the two races tomorrow? Um, we're looking good. Looking forward to them, for sure. Um, I think the breeze is supposed to be off the land again, so we may have some more tricky racing, but it should be good. How do you set your sail according to the wind? It really depends on when I get out there and I adjust it throughout the race to adjust in their conditions, be faster and better than my competitors. Do you like how this... Talk about the junior regatta being here in Nassau. You, you like that? Yeah, it's really close to home. The last time we had something like this was Bahamas Games in last summer. And I feel like it's really good because it mixes the older people with the younger generation. we letting them learn about sailing all around it within the country. You like the travel, so you would have rather it on the mm -hmm. island or one of those, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what's, what's ahead after this regatta for you and for you? Uh, next weekend, we have the KPMG regatta, which I feel like we both hope to really do well in because it's a qualifier for our Youth Worlds Championship that we really both hope to go to. What about you, Josh? Oh, yeah, like Norman was saying, uh, KPMG coming up next weekend. Um, it's a qualifier, that and Laser Junior Nationals. So uh, those two regattas are really important uh, when it comes to who goes to the World Championship. Now you guys normally be out to the best of the best, which is held in December. How do you feel about this atmosphere? Do you mind, do you mind you the best of the best? Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Definitely. This one feel better, though. Yeah. Because you got to compete and you ain't got to worry about the big boys. <laughs> <laughs> so talk about it, about having the same atmosphere. How much of an inspiration is it for you? 
I mean, best of the best really is, like, it's just the older people, you get to watch them go out and perform on all their different boats and compete against each other. Really just get an insight as to what they do throughout their lives. Well, what about, how do you feel about competing here? Um, honestly, I mean, compared to the best of the best regatta, how it feels alike, but not as sloop-oriented, you know, more international sailing in this one, so, um, but yeah. I'd like to thank you guys, had a good chance. Good view watching you two compete out there and looking forward to you competing again tomorrow. We're gonna take another quick break here from the Montague Foreshore. Sure. We're gonna bring two more youngsters in and then we're gonna wrap things in. Accidents and emergencies are not scheduled life events. When they occur, people are usually caught off guard. It is important during these times, however, to bring certain items with you when you or your relative present to the Accident and Emergency Department. The following items will assist healthcare providers with your specific case. Identification, photo ID for registration purposes. Examples include your driver's license, national insurance card, or passport. If you were admitted to hospital prior to your emergency, discharge summary, or most recent discharge letter with relevant information regarding prior diagnoses and treatment. The referral letter from the healthcare provider who would have sent you to the emergency department. All your medications and pills prescribed, herbal, or any over-the-counter medication is required. Have a list of all allergies, insurance card when necessary, emergency contact information, an interpreter for foreign nationals when necessary. Bring comfort items, change of clothing, books, iPads, blankets. Bring a list of questions for the medical providers. And of course, bring patients. Having these items on hand can help to minimize anxiety and frustration during your a and &E visit. Remember, the best person to manage your health is you. Back here at the Monarchy Foreshore, Charles Fisher, along with the other two young skippers. Introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Chase Thompson. And how old are you? I'm 13 years old. Uh, what class did you sail in? I just came from sailing the championship of the class. Well, what about you? My name is Andy Gibson. Uh, I'm 16 years old. I'm sailing the E class. Where are you from? Grand Bahama. Grand Bahama. Grand Bahama, second city. No. How was it? It was. It was good. Um, how long have you been sailing? About eight years. Eight years? How old are you? 13. <laughs> You've been sailing for more than half your life. Yes. Uh, and how, what do you like most about sailing? Probably just the excitement I get out of it, being on the water and just being around the water and on it. It just brings you a peace of mind out there. And how long, how does you, how do you feel to be here in New Providence sailing in these type of conditions? It feels good. This is the type of conditions people dream to come and sail in, so I guess it's good. Well, what about you? How, how, how did you do out there today? Well, I haven't sailed yet because uh -huh. the E-class is about to go up next. Uh -huh. And I've been sailing for five years. Okay, so he's been sailing longer than you. Yes, sir. <laughs> and what, what did he teach you? What, what did he he teach me nothing. I teach him. <laughs> How you could, if you've already been sailing for five, you've been sailing for eight. I you, learned more than him. You learn quicker than him? Yes, sir. Okay. And how do you hope to perform in the E-class? Um, this is my first time sailing the E-class. I hope to put out my best, do my best, and maybe I can come top three. But what do you enjoy most about sailing? Well, I enjoy being on the water because I love being around water and just being able to, like, race and sportsmanship, most and, likely. And you're happy to be here in Nassau this weekend to compete among the best of the best? Yes, sir. Uh, what about you? Do you have a future in sailing? Uh, uh, do you want to, what do you want to be when you grow up? When I grow up, I want to be a marine pilot, so I'm looking... That's why you have my headset looking like you already in the cockpit. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> 
<laughs> so I'm looking to get into a scholarship from the University of Central Florida. I know I see they have a sailing program there, so hopefully if I keep this up, I can get in there and get my degree. Well, you're already thinking far ahead. What about you? Me, physiotherapist. Um, working on a school in Howard, uh, Washington, D.C. Yeah, um, working on getting my degree, going for a swimming scholarship. Oh, you swim as well? Yes, sir. Okay, so you're going to be competing in the Carifna case? Yes, sir. Okay, congrats. congratulations. Hoping you're the best. You're going to be competing in front of thousands and thousands of persons right here at the Medicating National Aquatic Center. That is coming up in another three weeks. We're wishing you the best. Yes, sir. I like this. Thank you, guys. So how are you going to adjust for tomorrow? Uh, I'm going to learn from my mistakes, watch a lot of videos, and see what I did wrong sure so enough, I can right? adjust. Oh, but and how do you, you, you're getting ready to come up who your competition is going to be? Um, most, I have no idea, but I know people older than me. Old doesn't mean anything. It's all up here. Yes, sir. It's all up here and how you go with that. Well, the best of luck for you today in the E-Class, which will be coming up in another half hour, hour. And best of luck to you tomorrow as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, the E-Class will be coming up. So lots to do here at the Monarchy Four Shore, the Sudewood Knowles Junior Sailing Championships. We will be exiting right now because we have a busy day the Hugh Campbell Basketball Championship coming up later on this evening 9 o'clock right here on the ZNet Television Network ZNet Sports and ZNet Television bringing you a full day of sporting activities but we will be back on the air tomorrow from the Monarchy for sure thanks to our guests and everybody who enjoyed coming on the set today and we enjoy the action on the water and we are looking forward to an exciting day come Friday thanks a lot to the crew working behind the scenes Watching the ZNS Network, the People Station. Good morning, I'm Mr. Press and the Bahamas. Yesterday, the Prime Minister laid out a clear, compelling argument for the strides his administration has achieved. The Davis administration has tackled unprecedented challenges head on, stirring our nation towards stability and growth. Our focus today is on reinforcing that message, detailing our accomplishments and outlining our path forward. Under the Davis administration, we have transitioned from a fiscal crisis to sound economic stability. The fiscal peril we inherited demanded tough, immediate action. Thanks to disciplined fiscal management, innovative policies, and the resilient spirit of the Bahamian people, bolstered by strategic international partnership, partnerships, we are, we are now in a position of strength. The mid-year the mid budget outlined our commitment to security, progress, and prosperity. It's a mid-year statement that prioritizes our citizen security, economic stability, and national interests. When investing in areas that directly impact the lives of every Bahamian, from healthcare and education to infrastructure and environmental sustainability. This administration has launched several initiatives aimed at fostering economic growth, enhancing energy sustainability, and expanding educational opportunities. We've made significant investment in healthcare infrastructure and social programs directly contributing to our nation's resilience and prosper prosperity. Allow me to highlight a few of these policies and initiatives that are currently underway, driving us toward these goals. 
We have launched a new energy policy aimed at expanding renewable energy through microgrids, microgrids, emphasizing the engagement of local Bahamian firms and building local professional capacity. Our efforts to expand Bahamian ownership is ongoing, including significant support for entrepreneurs and small and medium enterprises. Alongside a 